Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. We all have our cross to bear, and in the case of Commander Shaw, an inspecting officer at Naval HQ at Portsmouth, it's a corker. The constant thorn in his side is a detachment stationed on an island, which, unfortunately for him, is just out of telescope range of his office window. What makes that so maddening is that, although he can't see if they're up to something, he knows they are. Commander Shaw here. Commander Povey, small crop disposal officer, would like to see you at once, sir. Oh, Crippin. What's old Thunderguts want now? Beg pardon, sir? Uh, I, I mean, did um, Commander Povey indicate the purpose of his visit at all? No, old Thunderguts didn't say so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pity. Ask him to come in, will you? Oh, yes, sir. I wonder what sort of a monumental clangor I've dropped this time. Look here, Shaw. I can only suppose that the indent form you sent to my office was intended as some form of ill-conceived joke. Uh, no. I happen to treat my job as small craft disposal officer seriously and was in two minds whether to send this ludicrous piece of nonsense to the CNC for him to take whatever action he felt necessary. Uh, uh, However, I try to be a fair man. So I've reluctantly decided to see if you've some reasonable sort of explanation first. Well, I... Now, what have you got to say? Uh, good morning, Povey. Oh, never mind good morning. What about the ridiculous answers on this indent form? Well, I want a launch to take me over to the island detachment on Friday. I see. Well, from the way you filled in my form, I'd never have known. Now, look at this one. Purpose for which craft is required. What did I put? It's too flaming far to swim. <laughs> well, it is. No. Oh. In subsection C, you really excelled yourself. Oh, what did I say? Question. How long do you expect to be after leaving harbour? Answer. About five foot ten as usual. <laughs> well, I can explain. I think. Hmm. I very much doubt it. But don't let me prevent you from trying. Thanks. You see, I've been inspecting that island unit for years. And next Friday will be my last visit. And what about it? Well, if you found that years of being got at and dropped in it were at an end, you'd get hysterical too, old man. Got at? Dropped in it? What are you talking about? You don't know what that shower are like. If I'd given them half a chance, they'd have had me reduced to the ranks and serving on something waterlogged years ago. Oh, stop the nonsense. Anyone would think you were scared stiff of them. I am. <laughs> I'm beginning to think it's just as well that next Friday will be the last time you'll be inspecting them. It's high time an officer who knew what he was doing went over there. Possibly, but there's a snag. What? Well, he may know what he's doing when he goes there, but I'll lay six to four he won't by the time he gets back. Yes, sir? Uh, would you mind filing this? Oh, certainly, sir. Oh, no, perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You're, um, you're new here, aren't you? Yes, sir. Hmm, I thought so. Nobody on this island has called me sir since the flood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm Sub Lieutenant Phillips. Um, Leslie Phillips. Oh, really? Mm. I've heard a lot about you from the other end. Oh, I say, have you really? Well, what do they say? Watch him. <laughs> well, that's terribly nice of them. I mean, fancy wanting to watch me. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> uh, by the way, there's one important thing I wanted to ask you. It's Heather. Age 23, unmarried, but not desperate about it. Will that be all, sir? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, uh, for, for the time being. Uh, uh, except... Um... Uh, 34, 22, 35. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for... Oh, no, 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 no. I, I wasn't going to ask you that at all. Oh, I see. Oh, but then I apologise. Oh, not at all, not at all. And what was the first one again? Hmm? 34. 34, oh, thanks, yes. Yeah. I just wanted to keep the book straight. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I, I just wanted to... Uh, uh, now, I think number one wants you, sir. Uh, thank heavens for that. Cool. Saved by the old buzzer. <laughs> Come in. You buzzed, sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Phillips, I buzzed. Ever since eight o'clock I've been buzzing. And what was the result, Mr. Phillips? Um... 
A worn out buzzer, sir? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I just wasn't there all the time. Let's be honest, Mr. Phillips. You're not all there any of the time. <laughs> no, I'm not, sir. But still, it can't be helped, I suppose. I mean, I'm so... Oh, I see. It's, uh, very funny, sir. You wanted to see me, sir. Yeah, yes, Mr. Phillips. I've just received a signal from Portsmouth which suggests that Friday is to be an auspicious occasion. A parting of the ways, which will no doubt please you enormously. Oh, really, sir? What time do you sail? Hmm? I don't, Mr. Phillips. Hard luck. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Uh, now then, Friday is to be the last inspection we shall receive from Commander Shaw. He is being transferred elsewhere, I gather. Of course. Some people have all the luck. Uh, it seems that Commander Shaw is particularly keen to take a, a pernickety butchers at all our transport. <laughs> oh, Lord, Chief Petty Officer Pertwee won't like that at all, sir. Then Chief Petty Officer Pertwee will have to lump it. Unfortunately, he never seems to have appreciated that the object of naval stores is to equip the service. No, sir. He seems to work under the illusion that he is in charge of a vast department store in which goods are always available to the highest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> you know what beats me, sir? It's, he never seems to get caught. Nobody can say I haven't tried, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> Unfortunately, he not only knows every trick in the book, he wrote it. Oh. <laughs> On admiralty paper, sir? Uh, very probably, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> In the circumstances, I feel it would be as well if I inspect the unit's transport before Commander Shaw does. What a good idea, sir. For one thing, I'd like to be certain we still have some. <laughs> yes, I'll come to think of it, sir. I haven't seen any lately. Neither have I. Whenever I phone the chief or, or a truck or a jeep, it's always um, collecting store, sir, or uh, waiting spare, sir. And nothing on wheels is ever actually there. <laughs> Oh, no, sir, he let me have a bicycle, you know. Really? What on earth did you want a bicycle for? Well, I didn't, actually, sir. <laughs> when I asked for a truck, he explained to me what a wonderful exercise cycling is. <laughs> I see. Did you know, sir, that 90% of the healthy people over 80 ride bicycles for at least an hour a day? Yeah. And every time you push the pedal, sir, 64 muscles are galvanised into action. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> never mind, Mr Phillips, I'm convinced. You are, sir? Yes. Convinced I'd better go round to the stores at once. Otherwise, Commander Shaw is liable to be inspecting two nuts, a rusty spanner, and a chief petty officer, Pertwee. <laughs> Stores closed, you've had it. Try again tomorrow. <laughs> I don't care if it's King Canute, flutter all. <laughs> I've got a report here, sir. Who said so? Number one, Chief. Well, if it's about his laundry, it's not back yet, and I've got three witnesses to prove he never sent any. <laughs> no, Chief. I'm your new assistant. Your what? I've got to help you in the stores. That's for your mistaken, my lad. In these stores, Chief Petty Officer Pertwee helps himself. <laughs> oh, yes. The other lads in my hut told me about you, Chief. Oh? What do they say? Watch him. <laughs> then remember it, my son. Remember it. Because horrible little sailors that upset Chief Petty Officer Pertwee have a funny habit of vanishing overnight. <laughs> <laughs> What's more, they're never heard of again. Except in tiny bits. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks very much. Don't mention it. Now then, Johnson. Look, seeing as you are here, I may as well give you a little job to do or something. Oh, no, look. Grab hold of all those brooms and brushes in the corner there, will you? Oh, yeah, Chief. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and sling them on the hand cart and take them down to the town and leave them at number, uh, number 53 in the high street, right? Oh, is that another naval store, Chief? Well, I suppose you could say it was, yeah. It's the local ironmongers. <laughs> I come to a slight arrangement with the owner, you know. What sort of arrangement, Chief? Well, if you must know, five bob each. <laughs> Look out, here comes number one. Watch it. Watch ah, it. good morning, Chief. Uh, you're getting careless, it seems. Careless soon? Me soon? Yeah, yes, sir. You, sir. The door was left open. As a rule, it needs 14 keys and a battering ram to get in here. <laughs> oh, uh, well, um, Abel Seaman Johnson must have left it open, sir. Yeah, then I shall be more careful in future, Johnson, or you're liable to vanish overnight, never to be heard of again, except in tiny bits. Aye, aye, sir. 
Uh, is there something I can get for you, sir? There is, Chief. Oh, sir? Well, Johnson? Uh, if it's about your laundry, sir, it's not back yet, and he's got three witnesses to... Bounce up! <laughs> right, right, Chief. Yes. It may interest you to know, Johnson, I'm not surprised about the laundry. I've been trying to get that particular lot back since 1953. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I can promise you one thing, sir. When it does turn up, it'll be spot, please. Yes, sir, I should think. After all, it's been on the boil for six years up to now. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll look into it at once, I sir. doubt if you'll have time, Chief. You see, Commander Shaw is making his last inspection of this unit on Friday and has expressed an intention of concentrating on our transport. <laughs> transport, sir? Uh, that's right, Chief. In case it has escaped your memory, we used to have quite a bit of it running round the unit before you came. Well, I've never seen any, sir. Now there's anyone else, Johnson. Not for years. <laughs> well, well, it's all here, sir. It's all here. Ah. Down to the last nut and bolt, it's all here. Splendid. Then in that case, I will inspect it at 0800 tomorrow morning, Chief. Aye, aye, sir. I'll have them all lined up. 08. 08 double O, sir. Uh, yes, Chief. Well, 8 o'clock in the morning, sir. As ever was, Chief. 08 double O. Oh, oh, sir. I mean, oh, oh, sir. <laughs> so, tell me. I mean, I'm, I mean, I shall look forward to it, sir. So shall I, Chief. So shall I. Grand morning, isn't it? Yeah, grand morning. That's done it. I'll never be able to get them back in time. What, Chief? What, Chief? Well, the trucks and the jeeps, of course. Ah. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's think, let's think. Now, where are they? Where are they? Three jeeps are delivering milk in Portsmouth. I know that. <laughs> think. Oh, yeah, get yeah, more... My brother's pulling his caravan with another, and uh, <laughs> then it's a three-ton truck. Now, where's that? The three-ton truck? What the heck's happened to the three-toner? Oh, no, quick, give me the blower. Here. Number, please. Uh, hello, love. Look, give me Paul Bright, two, uh, 252, quick, will you? Herbert Pertwee, removals and storage. Uh, Nunky, Johnson here. Look, I've got to have that van back, quick. But you can't. It's loaded with furniture. Then unload it. But that'll take hours. Not if you open the back and use the tipper, it won't. <laughs> but they're antiques, Chauncey boy. Good. A few more chips and bits of them won't notice. But I can't... Now, look, now, 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 don't muck about, monkey. Get that truck back here for Drake's sake. How did the inspection go, sir? Uh, surprisingly well, considering, Mr. Phillips. Good shout. Uh, there were one or two little uh, novelties, of course. <laughs> novelties, sir? Uh, yes. Empty milk bottles in several of the jeeps, and uh, what looked like the remains of a harpsichord in the three-tonner. <laughs> Good gracious. However, let us be grateful for small mercies. Uh, we have some transport. Yes, sir. All the same, I have a feeling that it is as well Commander Shaw gave us due warning of this inspection of his on Friday. You do, sir? Uh, yes. Otherwise, I think he'd be inspecting an empty parade ground and receiving a short lecture from Chief Petty Officer Pertwee on the joys of cycling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're probably right, sir. You sometimes are. Sometimes? <laughs> uh, always, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, was it all there, sir? Very nearly, Mr. Phillips. Uh, we appear to be one jeep missing. A jeep, sir? Uh, yes, and what I don't quite understand is that for once I don't think the chief knows where it is either. When I pointed out that we'd only got five instead of six, he seemed genuinely surprised. Where is it? Where is it? That's what I want to know. Where is it? Who's at the pleasure? What sniveling son of a sea cook spot that jeep? Oh, you can search me, Chief. I would if I thought you had it on you. <laughs> when I find out who's at it, I'm going to give him a straight going over, I can tell you. Are you sure you didn't lend it to someone? Pertwee never lends things, Johnson. He hires out. No, I didn't. <laughs> All the others, yes, but not that one. I'll keep it here for emergencies. Well, I don't understand it. Well, I do. I do. I hate to say it, but someone round here is dishonest. <laughs> Get away. Yeah, you wouldn't credit it, would you? Uh, hey, wait a minute. Look, wait a minute. Look, it's not very likely. I wonder if the jetty guard had got it. Give me the blower. Here you are. Oh. Number, please. Uh, hello, love. Look, give me the jetty guard, will you? One minute, please, Chief. Jetty guard is in. Who's that you were in? Chiefy Pertwee. Lining gate. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> now, look. Have you got a jeep down there? I lost one. A jeep? Chief, of course not. Don't you remember? Remember what? 
When Ginger and I asked you for one, you told us that 90% of the healthy people over 80 rode bicycles. And every time you push a pedal... All right, all right, all right, never mind. <laughs> hard luck, Chief, hard luck, nothing. Where is it? That's what I want to know. Where is it? Who's at the perisher, the thieving hound? What are you going to do? Overtime, my son. Fortunately, a relative of mine happens to work in main stores at Portsmouth. <laughs> You've got relatives in all the right places, haven't you, Chief? Yes, I have, and don't think it's been easy. <laughs> it's taken a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, Johnson? What? Do you know what? The first naval pert we was a powder monkey on the victory. And we've been sort of building up the organisation ever since. <laughs> I see. Yeah, can this relative at main stores fiddle another jeep, then? No, certainly not. We're up to strength already. However, it... Here. It's nothing to prevent him sending over a set of spare parts, so is that? Spare parts? Yeah, now let's see, what do we need? What do we... Make a list, write this down here. Right, yeah. right, four wheels, one gearbox. Yeah. To write it down, come on. Right, right. Right, two seats, chassis, hooter, plugs. Blimey, are you going to build one out of spare parts? No, mate, I'm going to watch whilst you build it. <laughs> right then, ready? Right, brakes, we better have them. Starter, oh. box of assorted nuts. Ready to cast off when you're ready, Commander Shorter? Oh, well, if we must, we must, I suppose. Cast off, Coxon. Stop! We! Oh, cripping. As you were, Coxon. Old Thunderguts is trying to do the four-minute mile. Oh, was a... oh, thank goodness I caught you. I was afraid I'd be too late. Oh, well, what's the matter, Povey? What's the matter? You haven't got a Coxon. What are you talking about? Of course I have. What do you think he is? The ancient mariner? <laughs> but you haven't got a Coxon officially. Oh, I don't want an official one. I've got him. He always takes me. Am I to understand that you've never put in a request for crew members? No, I haven't, as a matter of fact. I just pick him up on the pier and we, we, we push off. Pick him up and push off? <laughs> Good grief, Commander. Surely you're mad? No, for heaven's sake, sign this form at once. I must have things shipshape in my office. Very well. There you are. Thank you. I'm much obliged. Not at all. Is it all right for us to push off now? No, oh, really. Pick him up and push off. I don't... Uh, Coxon. Uh, push off, officially. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, blow me. Keep going, Johnson, my oh, son. Oh. Keep going. <laughs> Sixteen more nuts and a wheel and you can have your breakfast. Oh. <laughs> I don't want breakfast. I want to go to bed. You'll have your flaming breakfast and like it. Now then, hello. Here. Where's this bit going? In? in my pocket, Chief. Eh? It's my cigarette case. Oh, so it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, all covered in axle grease like that. I didn't recognise it. I never have believed that one man could build a jeep out of spare parts in one night. Frankly, Johnson, neither would I. So I took other precautions. Oh, what? Well, it so happens to see a relative of mine. What, another one? <laughs> yes. And what's more, he's practically new. <laughs> he's in charge of fleet air arm control at Jersey. Uh, I sent him a signal suggesting he might like to... Send a jeep up in an helicopter and point it in our direction. Do you mean I spent the night building this blooming thing and you won't need it? Well, of course I need it, you nit. I told you. The other's just a precaution. Precaution against what? In case you drop dead. Now hurry up. Only got a few hours. <laughs> Isaiah, say, Heather. Yes, sir. Has number one been buzzing? Not so far. Oh, good. Kamala Shaw can't have got here yet. Where have you been? Having a last look round to see if there was any sign of that missing jeep. Any luck? Not so much as a backfire. When it does turn up, someone's going to cop it right between the ears. Hmm. Nobody's supposed to use those jeeps except the captain, number one, and myself. Uh... Oh. Oh, lummy. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Oh, nothing at all. I, um, I said, Heather. Well? I, uh, do you remember the first day you came here and I took you down to the pub for a drink and you let me walk you home? Yes. Well, how, well, uh, <laughs> I, how, how did you, how, how did we get to the pub to begin with? Well, we drove there in a, oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, I forgot it. <laughs> that jeep's still outside the pub. 
it must be parched. Uh, I, I mean, parked. <laughs> well, what on earth are you going to do? Uh, uh, nothing. Uh, anything. Uh, every, every, everything. Uh, I, I don't know. Yes, I do. Where are you going? Well, uh, I'm down to the pub for, for a jeep. What? I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm for a quick one. Uh, I, I've got to try and get that jeep. Main office. Hello, Heather. Look, any message from Fleet Air Arm Control, Jersey? Yes, Chief. Your Uncle Sebastian Pertwee's compliments, and no, he can't fly a jeep over for you. Ah, the twister. He could if he wanted to. Never mind, love. Everything's under control now. How did you know? Eh? Hey? Oh, never mind. I'm not giving away trade secrets. Uh, get me CPO Pertwee, please, Heather. He's on the phone now, sir. Hello? Hello? Oh, good. Um, excuse me. Hello, Heather? Is that you, Chief? Blimey, what's happened to your voice? You've gone all sexy. <laughs> Have I really, Chief? Hmm. Oh, blimey, it's you, sir. It is, Chief. <laughs> yes. uh, yes, now, sir. now, how's the Jeep situation this morning? Uh, all six present and correct, sir, and lined up on the parade ground. Oh, splendid. I'm delighted to hear it. Oh, yeah, there's just one thing, sir. I, I, I wouldn't touch the last one too much, sir. <laughs> not to touch it? Why not? Well, uh, the paint's still a bit wet, sir. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, and by the way, sir, Abel Seaman Johnson is on sick parade. Uh, oh, nothing serious, I don't? No, sir, no, no. Just complete physical exhaustion. Ah. <laughs> you mean he had a rough night? Very, sir. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, well, do the best you can, Chief. Uh, Commander Shaw should be here any time now, and as this is his last inspection, I'd like everything to go smoothly. Oh, I said. Goodbye, Chief. Your head up. Sir? I don't seem to have seen any sign of Mr. Phillips this morning. He's been popping in and out, sir. Ah, that's Mr. Phillips, all right. Main office. One minute. It's a jetty guard for you, sir. Ah, um, hello? Number one here. Jetty guard, sir. Inspection party about naval launch sighted, sir. Thank you, Goldstein. Is the captain down there? No, sir. I think he's fishing on the rocks. He always is. Well, go and fetch him quickly, will you? He's supposed to be receiving Commander Shaw. Aye, aye, sir. I'll get him right away. Oh, and sir, would you tell Chiefy Pertwee not to worry about the jeep, sir? It'll be all right, sir. Very well. Now, double off and fetch the captain. Aye, aye, sir. Ah, there you are, Chief. Ah, yes, sir. Whole transport present and correct, sir. Splendid. Uh, which is the jeep which is, um, moist? <laughs> oh, uh, that one over there, sir. Uh, Abel Seaman Johnson has been, been, uh, tarring it up a bit. Uh, quite. The, the captain and commander Shaw are on their way here, but I haven't seen any sign of Sub-Lieutenant Phillips this morning, have you? No, sir, no. Yeah, it's very odd. I can't... But good gracious, what on earth? Oh, blimey. Another chief. Sub-Lieutenant Jeep. Uh, uh, Peep here. Uh, 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 Philip, uh, Phillips. Uh, Willips. Uh, Philip, uh, uh, reporting, sir. Sir, for duty. Uh, six, um, six Jeeps, all present and correct, sir. You'll simmer down, Mr. Phillips, or you'll blow up. Thank you, sir. Oh, blimey, we're rotting it now, sir. Uh, one of us is Jeep. The inspection party approaching. Why? What's the matter? Try counting the Jeeps, Mr. Phillips. Well, counting them, sir. Why, certainly. One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven? Seven. I uh, beg pardon, sir, and with due respect, sir. Eight. <laughs> Good grief, who dug that one up? Abel Seaman Goldstein reporting, sir. Jeep's all present and correct. Where'd you get this ape from? Well, you said you were a Jeep Shaw chief, so I thought I'd help you out, and I borrowed this one from a farmer. Gosh. I wish you hadn't borrowed it at muck spreading time. <laughs> Right, come on then, Goldstein. Shovel it up and get it out of here, can't you? <laughs> Stand past, Chief. Leave it where it is. Yeah, but inspection, sir. We can't have that evil-looking pile of... I'm afraid we shall have to, Chief. Ah, here comes the inspection party. Uh, oh, Lord, what are we going to do, sir? Hope Commander Shaw doesn't notice. Well, he, he, if he's down Windsor, he's bound to. <laughs> <laughs> then we shall all look forward to hearing your explanation, Mr. Phillips. I see, yes. Well, that's all right, then. It'll be very interesting, really, sir. Uh, my explanation, sir? <laughs> parade, parade, shut! <clears throat> well, I don't care what you say. You can't beat live bait. Oh, we seem to be here, Commander Shaw. Oh, do we? Oh, oh good show. Uh, stand easy, Lieutenant Commander Stanton. Stand easy, number one. Yes, sir. Stand easy, Mr. Phillips. Sir, stand easy, Chief. Sir. Go stay, sir. Get your flaming air cut. <laughs> Transport all present and correct, sir. A good show. I say, that jeep's just a tiny bit shabby, isn't it? Uh, shabby, sir. Uh, which one, sir? Which one? 
That thing with all the cabbage leaves and, uh, <laughs> and what have you all over it? Uh, one, that one, that, uh, yes. Well, I understand Sub-Lieutenant Phillips has an explanation, sir. Uh, you have, haven't you, Mr. Phillips? Well, oh, no, I haven't. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Uh, rather, I, I suppose, I... I suppose it's been on some exercise or other. Well, not as far as I know, sir. We never have any exercises. I, I mean, we, we, we um, uh, of course, all grueling, sir. It was, it was, uh, we, uh, hour after hour, we all... What's that noise? Noise, sir? Well, it appears to be a helicopter, sir. Hey? <laughs> what? A, a helicopter where? But up there, Chief, it seems to have got something slung underneath. Something slung? Oh, blimey, another jeep. Marjorie! <laughs> Good me! Good gracious. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. oh, Stoney. And then there were nine. <laughs> well, Chief? Not very, sir, no. Yeah. Give us a minute, will you? Give us a minute. Uh, oh, yes, um, a little, a, li a little demonstration of technical delivery of jeeps, sir. Specially laid on for Commander Shaw's last inspection of the detachment, sir. <laughs> really? I say, that's absolutely first class. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, Chief, brilliant. Uh, which reminds me, sir, may I say that we shall all miss your inspections. We're very sorry to see you go. Yes, I imagine you may be, actually. On my way over, I received a signal telling me that my successor had been appointed. Really, sir? Do we know him? You do? Commander Povey. Oh, dear. Oh, blimey, not old Thundercats. <laughs> That's right. He's a stickler for forms and figure work, so you'd better get those jeeps sorted out. Sorted out, sir? Yes, hadn't you noticed? The wet one, the filthy one, and the one that just dropped on us from a great height <laughs> have all got the same number painted on them. What? Oh, well, so they are. Well, wait a minute, sir. I can explain, sir. I can explain. Look, sir. Through a chain of highly unlikely but completely convincing coincidences, sir. Two sets in the paint shop, sir. Uh, we're working. Scrubby, chief. And in future, no jeeps are to be used without my written authority. Is that completely understood? Yes, sir, but you can't. I mean, I mean, how am I to... I mean, I mean you've got to be able to get a bath. I mean, to say, sir, you, you've got... If you want to get a bath... You oh, can't. Yes, I can, Chief. There are plenty of bicycles. Bicycles? Yes, Chief. Now, did you know that 90% of the healthy people over 80 ride bicycles for at least an hour a day, and every, every time, time you push, push the, the pedal, pedal 64 <laughs> muscles are galvanized <laughs> into... <laughs> That was Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one. John Pertwee was the chief petty officer. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, and Heather was Heather Chasen. Commander Shaw was Michael Bates. Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, and Uncle Sebastian Pertwee, Tenniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> Problems and headaches come from a variety of sources. The Navy is no exception to this rule, but in their case, the problems and headaches always come from exactly the same source, a detachment on a small island a few miles off Portsmouth. How long before we sight the island, Coxon? About a couple more minutes, sir. Oh, thank heavens for that. You may be a damn good commander, sure, but you're a shocking sailor. That's the trouble. I like the Navy. I just wish they didn't have boats. <laughs> oh, we'll soon sight the island now. If it's still there. Huh? Yes. Yeah. If it's still there? Well, it must be there. Not with the unit that one's got on it, Povey. <laughs> what do you mean? With that shower, they'd move the damn thing anywhere. <laughs> if the price was right. But, but you can't move an island. I'll lay you six to four, they can. Ah, nonsense. You've been too soft, Commander Shaw. Discipline is what they need. Now, <laughs> well, if I have any trouble with them, I'll split them up. Get them posted all over the confounded globe. Oh, I wouldn't do that, old man. Why not? Well, last time I tried it, absolutely nothing happened to them. But I got posted myself. <laughs> Fascinating. Where to? Three weeks relief duty, commanding a sea fort in the Irish Channel. 
I didn't know they were still mad. They're not. Good. Good grief. But surely you're not suggesting that you, as a commander, a senior officer, could have been posted by that lot on the island? Oh, I can't prove it. All I know is that the first time I visited them after I got back, they kept winking at me. <laughs> winking? Well, I felt as if I'd been on Jankers. Island ahead, sir. Oh, thank you, Coxon. And try and keep the wretched thing steady. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, you! Keep off! What was that? It's the old boy in that rowing boat, sir. Go away! Get that blistering boat out of it! Hold the course, will you? There won't be a fish between here and Java by the time you finish. Oh, dear, I gather we're disturbing the calm in his territorial waters. So that's it. Normal course, Coxon. Aye, right, sir. And try and find a calm bit. <laughs> All right, sir. No, at least I start with the element of surprise. They don't know I'm coming. Well, they haven't shot at us. <laughs> shot at us? They usually do. Good grief. They call it gunnery practice. I say, that's a bit much. It's also a bit dangerous. They're damn bad shots. Uh, I see. Well, all things considered, perhaps it's just as well they don't know we're coming. <laughs> Hey, Ginger, I'm going to tell you something. Don't bother, I'm having a kip. We are being victimized. Victimized? Why? This is the second time we've been on guard duty in a month. Oh, so what? Someone's cooking the rotor. You mean as well as us? That's a dead liberty. <laughs> Stuck on this jetty in the sun for eight hours. Persecution, that's what it is. Here, Tuppy. What? Here, what's that droning noise? Well, how should I know? Well, lift your great Welsh bounce up and have a look. <laughs> you look, it's your turn. No, it isn't, it's... Blimey! Tuffy! Quick! What's up? It's old Saul in the launch from Pompey. What? Start gunnery practice! <laughs> it's too late. They're practically here. Nip back and get the blower up to number one. It's your turn to do the nipping. Don't argue. I'll hold them off as long as I can, but get a move on. <laughs> Probably something a girl just wouldn't understand. Oh, quite. <laughs> Lieutenant Phillips, I'm sure number one wouldn't like to see you sitting in my in-tray. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I suppose I ought to be in the one marked um, pending. <laughs> mm, I think I'd better get a new one for you, marked to be dealt with later. Oh, mind the ink. Why, there's plenty of it in... <coughs> oh, law. I say I'm frightfully sorry. Frankly, so am I. Oh, well, it's some consolation being in the Wrens, I suppose. Yes, it is, isn't it? What is? It doesn't show. If you'd been in khaki, you'd have looked like a sultana pudding. Thank you very much. Well, you're the right shape. Uh, I, I, I mean, you're, you're certainly the right uh, uh, consistency. <laughs> you do try, don't you? Desperately. Hello? Extension 35? Oh, no, but Supplement Lieutenant Phillips is here. Well, hold on. You'll do. It's the jetty guard. Mm. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> Uh, Sergeant Lieutenant Phillips speaking. Uh, what? Oh, lummy. Com commence gunnery practice at once. Uh, oh. Uh, well, delay them as long as you can. I I'll contact number one. What's the matter? Shrimp boats are coming. We're frying tonight. <laughs> it's Commander Shaw and the Pompey launch. I, I, must, I must warn number one. He's in his office. Well, that's a novelty for a start. <laughs> now, you, you better... Yes? Um, uh, I, I don't know, but this is an emergency. If you think of anything, do it. On the other hand, uh, uh, perhaps not. <laughs> Here we go. Come in. Uh, sir? Yes, Phillips? Panic station, sir. Pompey launch. He's just approaching the jetty. Uh, then you better order gunnery practice. Uh, it won't work this time, sir. They're too close inshore. They what? Well, how did they manage to get so close? With the engine, sir. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I mean, we, uh, we don't know, sir, but, but, but they, they, they have. No, oh, then we just have to put up with them this time, I suppose. Pity... Word's gone round. Has it? Oh, good. Uh, Mr. Phillips, I'm asking you, not telling you. <laughs> oh, well, that makes a change. <laughs> I, 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 uh, well, that is, I presume it has, sir. As a precaution, you'd better make certain that Chief Petty Officer Pertwee knows. Aye, aye, sir. And uh, tell Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, with my compliments, that I don't know what he's doing. I most certainly don't want to know. But whatever it is, he'd better stop it at once and put it back. <laughs> Whatever it was. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Yeah, 
Then I think I should be able to relax. Aye, aye, sir. You will, sir? I've got a watertight answer for everything, Mr. Phillips. You have, sir? Oh, good. What is it? I shall see the authorities realise that any discrepancies are entirely your fault, Mr. Phillips. Oh, thank you very much, sir. That's terrible. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, sir. You couldn't. Couldn't I, Mr. Phillips? Yes, you could. <laughs> this is awful. I'd better warn C.P.O. Pertwee at once. He should be in his stores. Yeah, correction, Mr. Phillips. The Navy's stores. As you say, sir. But you'll never convince C.P.O. Pertwee of that. <laughs> we can but try, Mr. Phillips. We can but try. What oh, who is it? Abel Seaman Johnson, sir. Give the password. Scrounge. Get your friend. <laughs> Well, Johnson, and what does the Navy's latest dead aim recruiting want? Well, I was wondering what those crates were doing outside the clothing store, sir. They looks a bit irregular. Well, I see. Well, now, look, my son, I realise that you're new here, but there are certain strict rules you must observe. Yes, sir. Rule one, nothing around here is irregular. If the Navy don't know about it, put we done. <laughs> you know, is that understood? Yes, sir. Rule two, sir. Same as rule one and keep your perishing mouth shut. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, sir? Well? What are those crates doing outside the clothing store, sir? Minding their own flaming business! Yes, sir. I can see we're going to have a bit of trouble with you, my lad. But if you're so interested in those crates, you may as well get them onto the hand cart and trot off down to the station with them. They're full of uniforms. Oh, they're for another unit, then? Yeah, well, you could, you could put it like that. Eh? <laughs> it's a film unit. <laughs> And Uncle Lamont happens to work in their wardrobe department, and we've come to a little, uh, little arrangement, do you know? Well, you, you can't do that, sir. Rule three, I can. <laughs> For the last six years, the gear in those crates has supported Jack Hawkins with monotonous regularity. Good gracious. Oh, he thought the uniforms in his pictures always looked authentic. Well, now you know why. They are. <laughs> Stores here, we're close. Try again tomorrow. We're not closed, Chief. We are, and that's who I think it was, mate. Who, Chief? Number one. Look, my bet is he spotted those perishing crates outside the clothing store. Oh, that's torn it. Yeah, it certainly has. He'll want 25% of my profit. What? Hey, you mean he'd allow you to do it if he gets a cut? No, certainly not. He's an officer and a gentleman. Ah. However, he's also treasurer of the unit's comfort fund. <laughs> and that's got a very expensive blind eye. Oh, you don't get it. You wouldn't, but it's quite simple. Look, if number one knew that I was hiring out those uniforms, he'll calculate my profit on the deal, and as treasurer of the comfort fund, he'll suggest a 25% donation to the kitty. Ah. Yeah, so remember, my lad, what number one don't see officially, the comfort fund declares a divvy over. <laughs> In which case, Chief Berry Officer Pertwee is going to have the dead needle with you. Hello? Uh, extension 26. Yeah, who wants him? Oh, oh, Pertwee's... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, per, Pertwee's speaking, Mr. Phillips, sir. Right? No, I don't know. It must be a bad line. Hey, would. A launch? There can't be. There wasn't any gunfire. <laughs> oh, we'll see. Right, I'll sit right up again. Give us five minutes and we'll be in the clear. Trouble brewing, sir? Oh, worse than that. It's really well fermented. <laughs> Look, my son, you, you get the black paint and the stencils quick and then nip over to those crates outside the clothing store. Well, what do you want on them? They're already marked. Yeah, you're telling me they're marked Destination Vanguard Film Corporation Wardrobe, right? Right. Right, well, I do this. Look, blot out Film Corporation, yeah. put HMS in front of Vanguard and make wardrobe read wardroom. Uh, I get it. Yeah, well, if you haven't, I shall, right between the flaming ears. <laughs> so come on, look lively. Oi, oi, sir. Look out, number one. Ah, uh, CBO Pertwee. Uh, not guilty, sir. Oh. <laughs> now, I wonder what I've just missed. What were you up to, Chief? Oh, uh, 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 nothing, sir. Uh, no, no, nothing at all, sir. Uh, then you'd better report to the sick bay. Sick bay, sir? Me? Yeah, yes, you, sir. Any time you're inactive, you're ill. <laughs> well, the Chief was just explaining how the stores are run, sir. Really? Now, there's a top-secret lecture I'd love to have heard. Um, it was an abridged version, sir. That I can imagine. 
Uh, Chief, it seems we're about to receive an inspection from Commander Shaw. Uh. Now, as I was passing, I thought I'd make absolutely certain you knew about it and were um, prepared. Well, I had heard. Splendid. Well, carry on, then. Uh, there, there, there is one thing. Yes. On my way here, I fell over some crates outside the clothing store. Crates? Crates, Chief. <laughs> you might have them moved before inspection. Oh, it's all right, sir. I'm just going to repaint them. That's it! <laughs> Ah, quite cheap. I leave you to deal with the matter. Now, incidentally, I put you down for 30 tickets for the Unit Comfort Fund's next dance, Chief. Yes, sir, I was thinking of taking... 30 tickets? Uh, 30 doubles, of course. Ah, yes, all right. Uh, Good show, good show. Carry on. Grand morning, isn't it? Grand morning, isn't it? Grand morning, isn't it? Those tickets are 25 bob each. Poor, I could spit. Here, wait a minute. Here, just a minute. What's today? Thursday, Chief. Oh, blimey, it's torn it. Look, I've forgotten all about Operation Fagin. Oh, I bet some Lieutenant Phillips has as well. Here, give me that blower. The blower, the blower. I've got to have a word of this show like a bit sharpish. Hello, Station 35. Sub Lieutenant Phillips. Who's calling? One moment, please. Excuse me, homewrecker. You're wanted on the third. Oh, thanks, thanks. Hello, hello. Uh, Sub Lieutenant Homewrecker speaking. Uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> Sub Lieutenant uh, Phillips speaking. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, is it? Yes, oh, as it's you. What's gone wrong? Uh, a slight oversight, sir. And I trust the Pompey inspection won't take too long, sir, because, sir, uh, well, it's Thursday, sir. Is it? Oh, yes, so it is. <laughs> Happy Thursday, Pertwee. <laughs> now, what about it? The helicopter is due over from Jersey with your 500 duty free thanks this morning. Oh, good, yeah. I had to buy 20 in the wardroom last night. Yeah. Oh, 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 law. I'll contact a relative of mine at Fleet Air Arm Control and have the chopper return to base. They're all diverted. Oh, good show. Pertwee? Aye, sir. Uh, do you always have a relative on these occasions? Well, we, uh, we do our best, sir. <laughs> We're very prolific. Yes, I noticed. Oh, I'm wanted in number one's office. I expect the launch party has arrived. Keep me posted, will you? Oh, I see. Said... Come in. You buzzed, sir? Yes, I buzzed. Come in, Phillips. Uh, Commander Shaw, you know, and this is Commander Povey who's taking over from him. This unit is slack, slovenly, and incompetent. Oh, pleased to meet you, sir. <laughs> Apparently, there was a certain amount of difficulty in getting the Pompey launch tied up, Mr. Phillips. A certain amount. Thanks to that bungling rating of yours on the jetty, my coxswain's exhausted. If he threw that rope once, he threw it 25 times. <laughs> I thought the fool would never catch it. Ah, I'm sure Mr. Phillips has a complete explanation, sir. You have, haven't you? No. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, uh, well, as you see, it's, uh, you, I, you, it's, it's not always easy, sir, to uh, uh, c- catching a rope. Not easy? Good grief, it's only three feet at low tide. Ah, ah, yes, well, uh, well, perhaps the, your uh, rope is uh, only uh, two feet long. <laughs> Idiot. A good try, Phillips, but no. Number one. I want an urgent signal sent to Admiralty. There's a blasted launch full of morons messing about in our waters. Fouling up the fishing for a month. It's got to be stopped. And who is this? Yeah, the, the captain, sir. Lieutenant Commander Stanton. Uh, well, well, who the devil are these two? The morons. Well, the, the, <laughs> inspection from Portsmouth, sir. Oh. Oh, uh, how, uh, how do you do, sir? Damn badly. Well, uh, this is Commander Povey. He's taking over from Commander Shaw at Portsmouth, sir. Well, he's no fisherman. Oh, I don't know. He's caught us. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying, Mr. Phillips? Uh, was I? I, I? I shouldn't have been, should I? <laughs> no. Uh, hello? Um, Phillips here. Who? Uh, well, it's just a bit tricky at the moment. Uh, uh, could you ring back later? I... Uh, no. Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, I, uh, uh, hang on, will you? Who is it, Mr. Phillips? I, um, it, uh, da, da, poof, poof. Uh, I, I, it's for, for, for you, sir. Oh, well, speak up, man. Who is it? Uh, it's, uh, uh, uh <laughs> I, I've forgotten that. <laughs> forgotten? Forgotten? Uh, Mr. Phillips has a very short memory, haven't you, Mr. Phillips? Uh, no, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I've got a very... Oh, ah, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I, shocking. Shock, I, oh... I, I can't even remember who I am sometimes. 
Next time, let's hope it's for good. Oh. More confounded inefficiency. Give me that phone. I'll ask them what they want. Oh, certainly. Hello? No, no, no. Oh, please, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's red hot. It... Can't even take a simple message. Hello. You wish to speak to Lieutenant Commander Stanton? Now, who is it calling? You're the what? I see. I don't think so, but I'll ask him. Uh, uh, who, who is it? It's the Jubilee Fish Cafe. And they want to know if you've had any luck with the skate. Oh. <laughs> well, no. No, I, I'm afraid not. To, just a couple of haddock. Our luck, Captain. Hello? No, only a couple of haddock. I understand. The what? Oh, I'm sure he will. Goodbye. They'll do, and would you send them down in the jeep as usual? Of course. I don't think I feel very well. <laughs> if there's any justice, you'll probably drop dead. Lieutenant Commander Stanton, before I make any comment about this particular incident, I intend to make a full and thorough inspection of the unit. Now, with your permission, of course. Oh, y yes, yes, sir, of course, by all means. Uh, perhaps you chair us round, number one? No, certainly, sir, but uh, might I suggest a little refreshment here first? No sense in rushing off as soon as you get here. No, thanks. Perhaps you'd like a drink, sir. No, thank you. A cup of tea, sir. No, thanks. Cigarettes. No, thank you. Anyone would think you were stalling for time. He is. I... Oh! <laughs> oh, my foot. Oh, God. Sorry, Mr. Phillips. Shall we go, gentlemen? Fleet Air on journey. Hello, Poppy. It's me again, Chiefy Pertwee. Uh, give me the control tower, quick. One moment, please. Control tower? Squadron leader Pertwee, yeah? Hello, Nanky. Uh, it's me again. Here, about those cigarettes. What about them? Well, I've had another idea. Look, if you can't stop that chopper coming here, how about sending up something to shoot it down? <laughs> no. Well, why not? Then you could send out another air sea rescue chopper to pick up the pilot. It'd be a nice bit of practice for you. Out of the entire family, they always said you were the one who would start raving bonkers, and they were right. You got yourself in this mess. Get yourself out of it. Well, that's what I'm trying to do with you, not helping. That's right, I'm not. Goodbye. Yeah, traitor. Ah, Chief, you wanted to see me, I'm afraid. Um, oh, yes, sir, uh, yeah. Progress report on Operation Fagenzer. Well, there isn't any. The helicopter has taken off, and frankly, sir, we've had it. But why? Can't this relative of yours call it up on the RT and get the pilot to return to base? Well, it could, but it wouldn't have start something. Well, how? Well, this particular flight is ever so slightly completely unauthorised. Oh, oh. And if Nunky calls up the pilot, their rollicking lordships will tumble to it. They say, there's a chopper of theirs churning up a lot of air it's not entitled to. Oh, law. Where are our jolly visitors at present, sir? I'm not sure. Number one is showing them round. Oh, I can't help hoping he keeps them away from the landing strip for a bit because that chopper should be here any time now. Hmm. Oh, well, not to worry. I told you, I very much doubt if Povey or Shaw will spot the cigarettes anyway. I have a sneaking suspicion they will, sir. Because apart from your 500, I... Uh, well, I have another little order on board. Oh, really? How many? Hmm? Uh, 50,000. <laughs> oh, well, they'll come in handy. Uh, how many? 50,000, sir. I have a slight arrangement with the local tobacconist. I'm his old sailor. <laughs> cool, you know, you're... <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. Did you hear what I hear? Blimey. Blimey, it's here! Hey! Take it up a bit! Up a bit! Keep off the glass, can't you? <laughs> well? No, sir, not very. Do you think I could have an immediate transfer to foreign service? Uh, too late, I'm afraid, Pertwee. Your court martial's just touching down. Yeah. How about signing on for another 21 years, Pertwee? What for, sir? Well, I reckon your trial will last about 18 of them. <laughs> 
Will you be my defending officer, sir? You don't want me, Pertwee. <laughs> you want Lord Goddard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you number one. After everything else I've seen today, I'm not in the least surprised to find a full-scale smuggling going on as well. I want that crate out of that helicopter and onto my launch, and I want it done now. It's evidence. But, uh, Commander Povey, it's obviously just some silly mistake. I mean, what would we want with 50,000 cigarettes? I suppose you'll tell me in a minute that there isn't a man on this detachment who smokes. Well, I don't think we've got one who smokes 50,000 a day. <laughs> no. Uh, Mr. Phillips, sir... Do you know anything about these cigarettes? There seem to be over 50,000 of them. Oh, no, not me, sir, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to give them up. Oh. <laughs> well, if you're worried about your health, I must try and have you posted to somewhere that's bracing. Oh, thank you, sir. Like Iceland. <laughs> oh. Sir, sir. Mr. Phillips, sir, can I see you a minute? Mm, yes, Goldstein, what do you want? Hmm? <laughs> uh, you're on jetty guard, aren't you? Yes, sir. Persecution, that's what it is. This is a second time... Well, if you're supposed to be on jetty guard, what are you doing here? Well, orders from CPO Pertwee, sir. I have to collect two fire axes from the stores for the jetty. Would you sign the indent form, sir? Uh, uh, no, thank you. Uh, try Mr. Phillips. No, not me. The way things are right now, I'm not signing a thing. Ask Commander Povey. Oh, very well. Here you are. Now get the axes and get back to the jetty at the double. Oh, CPO Pertwee's very word, sir. Thank you. And you can tell that other idiot with you I'm sending in a report of his gross inefficiency along with every other irregularity in this unit. You know, I have a feeling that report is going to be so long it'll make war and peace look like a telephone message. <laughs> you can be sure of one thing, gentlemen. It will keep the Admiralty in courts martial for a year at least. And now let's get back to your office, number one. Yes, certainly, sir. Something tells me Chief Pertwee may want an interview with you sometime soon. Why the devil should he? I don't really know, but it's high time he thought of something. <laughs> it certainly is. Hello, Joyce. Are our wandering boys back yet? The vouchers? Yeah. Oh, yes. They're all in number one's office. Can't you see the walls vibrating? Yeah, splendid. I can't pour oil on the troubled waters. <laughs> uh, come in. Uh, I thought you might want to see me, sir. Very psychic of you, Pertwee. Yes. You know, I'm always pleased to see you, particularly on these occasions. Uh, Commander Pervy seems to require some sort of explanation. He does, sir. Uh, he does, Chief. I'm sure you have one ready. Oh, yes, of course I am. Well done. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee. Sir! I should warn you that after what I have witnessed during my inspection of this detachment, I intend to throw the book at this unit, and at you in particular. With all due respect, sir, my bet is he's read it. I have, sir. <laughs> and very dull I found it in all, sir. <laughs> uh, that is, sir, uh, with the exception of a certain little chapter on forms authorising the use of small craft by naval officers. Sir. <laughs> ah! Forms authorising the... Just what are you babbling about now? Yeah, do go on, Chief. It sounds uh, most uh, enterprising. Yeah, sir. And I quite by chance, and as a pure coincidence, sir, I had occasion to phone a relative of mine, sir. He was in good health, I trust? Yes, yes. excellent, sir. Thank you very much. Now, <laughs> this, sir, uh, this relative of mine, sir, if you follow me, he uh, quite by chance, and as a pure coincidence... Well, of course. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Well, he happened to be in touch with Ops through Portsmouth, you see. And they happened to mention, quite by chance, and as a pure coincidence... Oh, for heaven's sake. Yes, very likely, sir. Well, briefly, sir, <laughs> it seems that Portsmouth don't seem to have any authority for the use of a certain launch that's tied up to our jetty. Sir. <laughs> ah, that a very regular chief. Yes, sir, yes, that's what I thought. Why, well, that, that's ridiculous. But, uh, Commander Shaw will have seen to it, naturally. I didn't, you know. You're taking over from me, so I presumed you'd seen to the authority. But I thought that... Uh, hard luck, sirs. It would appear that their lordships are quietly confident your launch is not here, but on the end of a piece of string at Portsmouth. Are you beginning to get an idea of what you're up against yet, Povey? Yes, insolence. Very well, I, I, I'll admit a slight irregularity, though, which I'll soon put right when we get back. As you say, sir, it's no more than a slight irregularity at present. Ah, uh, yeah, provided the boat is returned to base undamaged, sir. Of course. If anything... Uh... <laughs> so I say, if, if anything happens to it, 
And you had to go back without it. Ah, then there might be quite a, a sort of inquiry, eh, Bertrand? Oh, very likely, sir, very likely. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as a witness, I should have to... Oh, uh, yes, naturally, sir, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a shame, but what else could you do? Yeah, I mean... Exactly, and of course my evidence would hardly... Yeah, quite so, quite right, sir, yes. Oh, a tragic end to a promise in naval career, sir, just... No, that with what it. it. Damage? What are, you, what are you talking about? That boat's in perfect order. Oh, I'm sure it is, aren't you, Chief? Oh, of course, sir. But the jetty guard are on the phone in the outer office, and I understand they want to report a small fire. A fire? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, aboard your launch, sir. What? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, 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 I thought I smelled burning. <laughs> but, 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 but I... I Steady, I, I, Povey. You're going a funny colour. <laughs> It's quite right, sir, but don't worry, sir. Don't worry, the, the, the boys will soon deal with it, sir. They've got axes. Ah, of course. <laughs> yes, you remember you signed the authority for them, so it's quite in order for them to be you. Yes, well, I'll just go and speak to the boys. Sir, uh, sir? I... Uh, yeah, you I, were about to say? Uh, well, well, of all of... Uh, I don't know what to say. How about game, set and match? <laughs> exactly. I don't think Commander Povey will be making an adverse report this time after all, Chief. That's right, sir, isn't it? I just sheer sh sh blackmail it. Very well. Uh, but you won't get away with this. I'll get the lot of you if it's the last thing I do. Thank you, sir. Fire extinguished and no damage done, sir. Ah. <laughs> That'll be all, Chief. Oh, I said, oh, oh, sir. What uh, about a certain ill-timed airmail delivery of cigarettes, sir? Uh, well? Well, whilst Commander Povey is here, sir, can I have permission to collect some wood from the naval stores? Some wood? What for? Well, I thought I'd build a, a small cigarette kiosk smack bang outside the nappy, sir. Ah, yes, a very sound scheme, Chief. And as treasurer of the Comfort Fund, I fully approve. You were intending to donate all the profits, of course. Oh, naturally, sir. You could have your usual 25%. All the profits? No, Chief. Uh, and the Comfort Fund is extremely grateful, Pertwee. Yeah, I can imagine. Stung me. Sixpence on ten, a bob on twenty, and I could have made over four hundred and fifty. That'll be all, Chief. Dismiss. <laughs> That was Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Joyce was Pamela Buck, Commander Shaw was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, and squadron leader Pertwee, Taniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> Nowadays, ordinary daily shopping seems to get more and more expensive. Fortunately for a naval detachment on a small island off Portsmouth, they never have to go shopping. They just indent from stores. And they claim, with some justification, that no other unit makes a bigger dent in the stores than they do. But that's only one of the complaints of the inspecting officer from Portsmouth. And one last thing, number one. Next time I come to inspect this island, I'd be obliged if you didn't try and blast my launch out of the water with your big guns. Uh, it was just uh, blind bad luck, sir. Oh, yes, sir. We reckon we got it. Uh, what? <laughs> well, we, 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 uh, we, <laughs> we, we reckon we got it. Uh, uh, <laughs> right, sir. Exactly. What Mr. Phillips is trying to say, Commander Burby, is that the jetty guard mistook you for an admiral at a distance, and naturally I ordered a 21-gun salute. That I am well aware of. Twenty of them landed within fifty feet of me. <laughs> really? I wonder where the other one went. <laughs> I know where I wish it had gone. You nearly had my rudder off a couple of times. Well, say, so you should have sat down. Oh, you mean the boat? Oh. Aren't you supposed to be doing something, Mr. Phillips? I am, sir, yes. What? Uh, my nut. Uh, well, go and do it somewhere else. I can only apologise to you again, Commander Povey. Very well, but let it be clearly understood that whether you call it gunnery practice, a 21-gun salute, 
or pooping off a few to celebrate the Chinese New Year, I will not be shot at again. Uh, quite, sir. Oh, I don't think he likes me very much. Who does? However, I must admit that I don't find Commander Povey a riot of fun myself. All the same, we have to have an inspecting officer coming over from Portsmouth. I much preferred Commander Shaw to this replacement. Agreed, Mr. Phillips, but I seem to remember it took us quite a while to get Commander Shaw into our little ways. Oh, I don't know. After we shot at him a couple of times, he soon got the message. <laughs> yes, he did seem a little more friendly. Mm. It's rather a pity. Just as we get Commander Shaw <laughs> trained, he gets replaced by old Thunderguts. Mm, yes. <laughs> Very disrespectful of you, Mr. Phillips, but I agree. I say, sir, do you think it would do any good to ask Chief Petty Officer Pertwee if one of his many relatives could get Commander Povey posted somewhere else? Certainly not, Mr. Phillips. I wouldn't dream of such a thing. Oh, you ask him. <laughs> I hardly think this uh, unusual influence will be able to cope with this situation, but with Pertwee, one never knows. <laughs> I'll mention it in passing, sir. Very uh, good. Ever since Povey took over from Shaw, I've had a positive flood of signals and forms from Pompey. I've even had to open up a not-received file. A what, sir? A not-received file, Mr. Phillips. A little device of mine for storing all the instructions, suggestions and rockets I prefer not to know about and have therefore not received. <laughs> but, uh, don't you get more signals asking why you haven't replied to the first lot, sir? Oh, yes, always. Uh, they go in the not-received file, too. <laughs> Oh, it's infallible, sir. Very nearly, Mr. Phillips. As a rule, whoever is doing all the writing gets posted, retired, or fed up long before I do. What happens if they don't, sir? Oh, eventually, if they're really persistent, I send them an urgent priority single demanding to know why they haven't answered my signal. But you haven't sent one, sir. I know, but it keeps them quiet for a bit while they try and find it. <laughs> There's a... There's just one thing that puzzles me about this idea, sir. What's that, Mr. Phillips? How come C.P.O. Pertwee didn't think of it first? It is surprising, but let us be grateful, Mr. Phillips. The day Pertwee opens up a not-received file, we consider him as completely cut off from the outside world, and us in particular. <laughs> well, I'll go and see him straight away, sir, and see if he has any suggestions about the... Uh... The Povey situation, sir. Yeah, by all means. And whilst you're in the stores, you might also mention that I'm still waiting for a new chair, Mr. Phillips. This thing's a disgrace. Uh, what sort of chair do you want, sir? Oh, I'm not fussy. Uh, one like that luxurious, well-upholstered dream of a lounger's paradise Pertwee has himself would do. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Uh, and before he explains why I can't have one, tell him, standing orders state I can sit. <laughs> Aye, aye, sir. I'll go round to the stores immediately. Oh, by all means, Mr. Phillips, because if I don't get a chair soon, I shall have to put your name on the subscription list of the Unit Comfort Fund. I beg your pardon, sir? A very expensive list, that, Mr. Phillips. Whenever I'm sure there's something going on that I don't know about, the Unit Comfort Fund usually benefits. Mm, I've heard about it, sir. It costs C.P.O. Pertwee a bomb. A very frequent and generous subscriber. Mm, he put it another way, sir. He reckons he's been done rotten. <laughs> then watch it, Mr. Phillips. The Unit Comfort Fund may have a social evening any time now. I'll contact C.P.O. Pertwee at once, sir. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Oh, I don't think he likes me very much. Who does? Uh, Heather, do you mind? They should never let women have the vote, let alone join the Navy. Well, what's number one's trouble this morning? Me, Commander Povey, me, his chair, and me again. <laughs> Well, the others I understand, but what's wrong with his chair? Well, he falls to pieces when he sits on it. Oh. So what are you going to do about it? I'm hoping he's going to sit on it. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean I, I'm going over to see C.P.O. Pertwee about a new one. And the best of luck. The last person who got anything out of those stores was a powder monkey on the Victory. I know, and if the Victory had come from Pertwee's stores, Nelson would still be awaiting delivery. <laughs> Don't you get a new chair for yourself while you're about it? What a good idea, Heather. After all, if I'm not going to get one for number one, I may as well not get one for me at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> Stores here with stock taken. Good morning. I didn't know we were taking stock, Chief. You're not, but I have a perishing sight too often. You mean to say we're a bit short? Yeah, just a bit, Johnson, yes. Just a bit. 
fact, the only thing is we've got the right number of years, this flaming hut and us. <laughs> oh, good morning, Chief. Oh, oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Phillips. Uh, I see you've been tidying up. Hi. <laughs> Tidy nuts, eh? Yes, there seems to be a lot more room in here than usual. <laughs> but we Yes, sir. How do you get on with Commander Povey? Well, as an inspecting officer, he's everything the Navy could wish for, sir. I ate the perishing sight of him. <laughs> yes, yes, that follows. Um, uh, we, um, uh, number one, uh, that is, um, uh, well, I, uh, I was wondering if, um, if perhaps one of your relatives couldn't, um, uh, how shall I put it? Well, uh, find Commander Povey a, a more agreeable posting, sir. Exactly, Jim. No, 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 sir. No, nothing doing, sir. No, we tried it. Oh, pity. Well, yeah, we had him marked down for a nice... Cozy little island off Scotland, sir. You know, just him, four Falcons, and James Robertson Justice. <laughs> oh, it sounds ideal. Who objected? The Falcons? Oh, no, sir. No, no, no. Commander Povey got wind of it. What happened? Well, a relative of mine is now on an island with four Falcons and James Robertson Justice. <laughs> oh, hard luck, Chief. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. However, with, the, uh, with regard to the other little matters, eh, everything is under control. Oh, good, good. Yes, yes. Yeah. Another relative of mine, sir, who um, happens to be in the record department, you know. They do get around, don't they? Yes, sir, they're very mobile, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, this relative happened to notice, uh, quite by chance, and as a pure coincidence, Oh, of course, yes. uh, That uh, Commander Shaw was overdue for promotion and uh, has rectified this oversight rapidly. Good show. Yeah, he's, he also noticed that uh, there happened to be a vacancy of the right rank which, quite by chance, sir, and is a pure coincidence. Y yes, yeah. all right, all right. Let's take it for granted it wasn't half a fluke. Hmm? <laughs> uh, where's Commander Shaw now? Well, he's Commander Povey's immediate superior officer at the Admiralities. Cool. <laughs> that ought to hold him. Well done, Pertwee. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Will that be all, sir? Uh, yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Number one, can't sit down. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, 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 number one wants to know what's happened to his chair. Well, I never touched it. I've got three witnesses who could prove it. I wasn't even there. So no, 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 no. He... he wants to know what's happened about a new one. A new one? Yes, I, I want a new one as well, as a matter of fact. Oh. A couple like this effort of yours will suit our um, uh, anatomies very well. Well, it can't be done, sir. <sighs> no, no, can't be, no, no, can't be done, sir. Look, main stalls are very strict about office furniture. Well, I, I'll tell you what, look, I could get you a nice line in dead, upright, untouched deal. Pertwee? Oh, yes, sir, yes. I don't want to be difficult, Pertwee, but why can't number one and I have a chair like yours? Well, you see, it's a question of rank, sir. But in that case, surely officers... Oh, are... no, no! No, 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 sir, no. <laughs> no, no, you can only cop one of these if you're the first sea lord. Oh, oh I see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's silly of me. Yes, <laughs> Thinking that a sub lieutenant would be entitled to. Uh... Hey, just a minute. Yeah, well, about that enamel, sir. Look, <laughs> the enamel, I've got it in muddy brown, dustbin grey. Pertwee? Oh, yes, sir. What are you, as a chief petty officer, doing with a fur sea lord's chair? Oh, well, uh, mind, mind in it. Yes, mind in it. Yeah, it's not good enough, chief. No? How did you get hold of it? Well, sir, a relative of mine in Whitehall, he. Uh... <laughs> Well, he plays a very confident hand at poker, sir. Good grief. You mean you won it? Well, he won it, yes, temporarily, sir, yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, how did you get hold of it? How did I get hold of it? Yes. <laughs> Would you care for a game, sir? Yes. Sir. <laughs> oh, no, 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 of course. No, of course. No. Well, well, do the best you can, Chief, about the chairs, yeah, won't yeah. you? And now one's getting up steam. Yes, message received and understood, sir. I'll indent for your chairs today. Good show. Carry on. Hi, I see. Thank you, sir. I can't get over the way you've tidied up this place. <laughs> it's almost an echo. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Chief. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Chopsy! Hi, hi, Chief. Look, give me them indent forms, sharpish. Right, Chief. Are you going to indent for the two chairs, then? <laughs> Not really likely. We'll have 200. What for? What for? Yeah. Strategy, my son. Strategy. Look, main stores at Portsmouth aren't exactly used to getting... Small orders from this office, are they? Oh, you mean you mean they might get curious if you only ordered two or something? That's right, my son. Oh. Unless it was battleships. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the per the Pertwee family motto is take the order, bump it up a bit, and pass it on. Uh, right, honey, uh, go and get the fool. <laughs> In the 
event of situation not being remedied to my satisfaction within 24 hours, I should be obliged to institute court martial proceedings against you. Signed, Pervy, Commander Portsmouth, etc., etc., etc. Got done? Yes, sir. Anything else? No, sir. Accept your signature on this Indian form from a warrant officer, Hildebrand Pertwee, Quartermaster Main Stores, Portsmouth. Pertwee? Pertwee? That name sounds familiar. It seems to be quite a common name in the service, sir. Hmm, so I gather. <laughs> now then, what's this? Chairs, urgent are required by... Good grief! Are they mad? But, but they never get them on the island. What's the matter, sir? This indent is for a thousand armchairs. <laughs> in pale mauve chintz. With navy blue. Good gracious. Yeah. Now, jolly soon, put a stop to this nonsense. I want an urgent signal sent to number one island detachment. A signal reads, uh, 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 I, uh that is, uh, oh, for goodness sake, find me an able seaman who can take shorthand. I want to spread myself. Sir? Come in. Uh, you uh, wanted to see me, sir? Uh, yes, Chief. Now, where's my confounded chair? Oh, well, I've intended for it from my stores, Portsmouth. Sir. Oh, splendid. Otherwise, I may have to purchase one out of the Unit Comfort Fund. Oh, blimey. Uh, and uh, in order to make good the expenditure, I shall have to run another um, social, Chief. Tickets, same price as before, of course. Yes, yeah, I'll get on the blower and chase him up straight away. Sir. Aha, I thought you might. Nothing like one of my socials for, uh, uh come in. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. I don't know about excusing you, Mr. Phillips. I try to make allowances. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. That's jolly kind of you. And, oh, <laughs> yes. Well, what seems with the trouble, Mr. Phillips? A uh, signal from Commander Pervy, sir. It's, it's red hot. Uh, permission to leave, sir. That's the way we are, Chief. <laughs> I haven't read the signal yet. Oh. Ah, yes. This, 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 it does concern you, Chief. Yes, I thought it would, sir. Uh, permission to leave, sir. No. <laughs> thank you, sir. This signal, by way of a change, is from Commander Povey and reads, Chair indent ridiculously excessive and cancel. Oh, hard luck, sir. Hard luck, sir. Well, still, there it is. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll be... Now, sir. one moment, Chief. Uh, yes, sir. Whenever you admit defeat as easily as that, I can't sleep at nights. No, sir? No, Chief. I lie awake wondering what is the fast one you've pulled that I haven't found out about. <laughs> In short, how could one chair be considered ridiculously excessive? One chairs? Uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it's a uh, poof. Um, <laughs> yes, Mr. Phillips, something um, is troubling you? Uh, yes, it is. No, 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 it isn't. Uh, I, I, I know. Couldn't we put um, that signal in your not received files, huh? Not received files? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Phillips. That's done it. Oh, oh, pardon, sir. <laughs> a not received file, sir? Do you mean you've got a file where you could... I, I, I made a mistake, Patrick. You most certainly did, Mr. Phillips. Well, he said pardon, sir. So. <laughs> Thank you, Pertwee. Now, now, look, about this chair. I understand that Commander Shaw has received a little uh, unexpected promotion and is now Commander Povey's immediate superior officer at Admiralty. Yes, I had heard, sir. Yes. Had you really? Yes. Well, perhaps it might be in order for me to ring him up and congratulate him. Oh, yeah, quite in order, sir. Yes, yes. And do you have a conversation, sir? You think you, I might mention... Yeah, yeah, a certain signal is... Uh, uh, I had to go in your not receive file. Oh, uh, I, I've done it again, sir. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, if that's all said, I, I must get back to the stores. You seem to be in a terrible hurry, Chief. Uh, yes, sir. I've just remembered some clinical work which requires my urgent considerations. Oh, I was afraid of that. Uh, very well, Chief. But uh, before you get too deeply involved in your administrative duties, you won't forget that the Unit Comfort Fund may have a social at any time, will you? No, sir. No. Ah, splendid. Carry on. <laughs> Commander Shaw here. Any sign of an answer to that urgent query I put through just now? Your leading seaman, White, is on his way to your office with it now, sir. Good show. Come in. Leading seaman, White, sir. Your elevens, is, sir. Well done. <laughs> That'll be all. Aye, aye, sir. And try and be on time tomorrow. Aye, aye, sir. It gets lonely in here. Carry on. Good gracious, it works. Hello? Commander Shaw here. Uh, Lieutenant Price, number one Portsmouth detachment here, sir. Oh. 
Oh dear. Uh, look, do me a favour and ring up somebody else up here. There's a good chap. Ring up somebody else, sir? Why? Well, I've only just got here and I was hoping I might be able to stay. Oh, I'm sure you will, sir. With all due respect, sir, that's why I rang you up. I wanted to congratulate you, sir, on your promotion. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. I don't understand it either. Uh, richly deserved, sir. I felt I just had to ring you. By the way, sir, whilst we're still on the phone, I wasn't going to mention... Not the... much. Go on. Uh, uh, well, sir, uh, do you happen to remember the chair in my office? Chair? You mean that badly stacked pile of firewood behind your desk? Uh, uh, exactly, sir. Well, I had thought of indenting for another one, but Commander Purvey seems to feel the indent is excessive. Really? Well, it's hardly the thing, but you leave it to me. I'll have a word with Commander Purvey myself. Oh, but I wouldn't dream That's about... all right. I'll enjoy it. I've been trying to find something to do ever since I got here. Oh, uh, most, most kind of you, sir. Most kind. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> Room here, sir. Oh, uh, send a signal to Commander Povey at Portsmouth, will you? Oh, uh, sir. Message reads, Chair Indent for Island Detachment Considered Essential. Delivery to be immediate priority. <laughs> Signed, Commander Shaw, etc., etc. <clears throat> Got that? Oh, yeah, sir. Good. Oh, by the way... Sir? Any more in the pot? Hildebrand Pertwee speaking. Nunky, it's me again. We're closed for stock taking. Good morning. Now, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. Look, what about my chairs? Oh, I'm getting them as soon as I can. Well, haven't you got any in stock, then? Yes, but not 1,500. No, of course you... <laughs> What's that? How many? 1,500. Oh, stone me. How did it get up to that number? This... Well, it's... Well, don't bother. I can guess you've all been at it. <laughs> Look, Nunky, look, hurry up and get those chairs. It's getting a bit hot over here. I'm not surprised. I'm having to call in all available chairs in all units over here. Well, look, hurry up for Drake's sake. Goodbye. <laughs> well, if Monday's no good, um, how about Tuesday evening? Um, I've got to wash my hair. Uh, Wednesday evening? I'm on duty. Thursday? Bath night. Friday? I don't know yet, but I'll think of something. <laughs> I know. How about Saturday? I've got two seats for a play. No, thanks. I've seen one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's number one again. So what? Let him wait. Do him good. Oh, coming, sir. Oh, coming. That's right. Show him who's boss. Come in. You buzzed, sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Phillips, I buzzed. <laughs> Several times. I was trying to find a tune you liked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> any sign of your chair yet, sir? Uh, no, Mr. Phillips, not so much as a cast iron. <laughs> Have you tried contacting CPO Pertwee again, sir? Frequently. What did he say, sir? As far as I remember, stalls here, we're stock tagging, good morning, click. <laughs> Well, sir, you know what they say about Pertwee. If at first you don't succeed, give up. <laughs> However, I shall have one more go. Yes, sir? I'm feeling in a reckless mood, Heather. Try and get CPO Pertwee again, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Stores here, we're stock taking. To Bob each way, Dandelion. Here, who's that? Uh, it's number one. Cheat. Oh, I'm in down. Sorry, sir. I mean, what can I do for you? <laughs> I just rang up to see if by any chance you were on your way round here with my chair, Chief. Oh, no, I'm afraid not, sir. No, I'm still waiting delivery from main stores. I see. Have you phoned them up about it? Well, I was, I was just about to now, sir, when a funny thing happened. They rang me first. What for? To ask if we've got any chairs. <laughs> How strange. Hey, someone up at the Admiralty stores wants 1500s. Fascinating. Then we'd better get hold of mine quick. Uh, yes, sir. Goodbye, Chief. Uh, any luck, sir? No, don't be ridiculous, Mr. Phillips. I was talking to CPO Pertwee. Oh, I was forgetting. I, I suppose it wouldn't do any good to have a word with Commander Povey, sir. Uh, well, uh, neither do I, but we can always try. Yes, sir. Oh, Heather, get me Commander Povey at Portsmouth, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Oh, by the way, Heather, what about Tuesday? I'm washing my hair. Wednesday evening? I'm on duty. Thursday? Bath night, sir. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Uh, what is it? Uh, shortcut, sir. Try Monday week. Uh. <laughs> Commander Purvey here. Oh, 
way I left you in a price here, Commander Bobby. And to what do I owe this great honour, may uh, I ask? Well, uh, Commander Bobby, I just, can't uh, believe we're actually communicating with each other after so long. Day after day, I've sent you signals, duplicate signals. You have, sir. Well, I have really. And what have I had from you? Nothing. Not one single solitary blasted word. Not even a full stop from your end. And not that it would surprise me in the slightest if your confounded wireless room was tuned into Housewife's Choice or Workers' Playtime all day long. If there is big a bunch of left handed, dunder headed, no nothing, simple minded, thick skull. Give me the other phone, will you, Mr. Phillips? I don't think Commander Pope is quite finished. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he hasn't, but he doesn't need my end of the conversation anymore. Pass me the other phone. Aye, aye, sir. Admiralty, Commander Shaw here. Ah, uh, number one Portsmouth Island detachment here, sir. Oh, Law, what do you want? Well, I couldn't remember if I had congratulated you on your promotion, sir. Uh, we always got on so well. You've with... already phoned me about this once, number one. Have I really, sir? Yes, you also asked me to arrange about your chair. Ah, oh, well, now, it's funny you should mention that, sir. It hasn't turned up so far, and I thought you might be able to... No, I most certainly can't, number one. Oh, uh, why is that, sir? Because a couple of ratings from stores have just been in here and pinched my chair. <laughs> Gracious. And as far as I know, there isn't an officer in the whole confounded Navy who can sit down. Goodbye. Fifteen hundred and ninety-eight. Fourteen hundred and ninety-nine. Fifteen hundred. Blimey. Fifteen hundred chairs. They're all here, Chief. Chief? Chief, where are you, Chief? Walled up behind 1,494 and 494. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief. Here. There. Oh, you're right. That you, Johnson? Very kind of you to let me out. Oh, that's, that's all right, Chief. I'd do it to anybody, really. Look, why, why don't you look what you're saying? Oh, will do it! <laughs> I didn't do it deliberately, Chief. Oh, it's just as well you didn't, my son, or I'd have your guts for darkness. <laughs> now then. Now look, about these chairs. What are we going to do with them all then? Do it well, it's simple. Look, sort out the best 200 and send all the others back, right? Give all my relatives a chance to get Adam on the upline for a change. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, Chief. All right. Now what? What are we going to do with the 200? Sit on them and play musical chairs for a month, of course. <laughs> oh. Look, you must know, Johnson, the remainder of these 200 chairs are going to the second-hand furniture shop in the town. I've come to a slight uh, arrangement with the owner. Oh, uh, who's that? Me. <laughs> right. Now, then, get on the main stores, Portsmouth, and tell them there are 1,300 chairs on the way back. Aye, aye, Chief. Ah, there you are, Pertwee. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, how's your chair, sir? Absolutely first class, Pertwee. Good. First class, yeah. I hope you enjoyed your 14 days compassionate leave. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes, very kind of you, sir. By, by the way, Pertwee, number one wants to see you urgently. Uh, I thought he might. Did you, Gilles? Yes, he's back. Oh, stone. Hello, oh, sir. <laughs> Where did you come from? Oh, I mean, uh, is there something something I can get for you? Uh, barely not, Chief. I just made an inspection of the unit, and as far as I can see, the only person who hasn't got a new chair is me. Well, well, there's a liberty. Yeah, it must have been a, a temporary slip of memory for which I have a complete explanation, sir. What? I forgot the perisher. <laughs> so I gathered. Uh, yours is comfortable, I trust, Mr. Phillips? Oh, yes, thank you, sir. It's absolutely... Oh, 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 I... Uh, <laughs> any, any time you'd like to borrow it, sir, you're only too welcome. Well, thank you, Mr. Phillips. Most generous of you. But during the Chief's absence, I've made other arrangements. Other arrangements, eh? Mm. What? Mm. Oh, all right, where is he? Now, who's at it? Where's my chair? Where is it, sir? Uh, I've got it, Chief. My word, it is comfortable, isn't it? Yes. Very luxurious, luxuri sir. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me, Chief. Here it comes. The Unit Comfort Fund is having a social on Friday. Yes, yes, I thought it would. Yes. I've put you down for 30 tickets in the raffle, as usual. 30? But they're a quid each, sir. Magnificent contribution, Chief. And <laughs> so, so unexpected. Yes, wasn't it? Yes. 
And as I'm expecting quite a crowd at the social, you might have a discreet word with the proprietor of that little second-hand furniture shop in the town for me. The proprietor? The proprietor, chief. I understand he's keen to donate some war surplus chairs he's recently acquired. I say, that's jolly sporting orange, huh? Yes, isn't it, Mr. Phillips? It's a carver. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's a diabolical carver. Uh, quite so. Good morning, Chief. Grand day, isn't it? Cool. <laughs> That was Dennis Price, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips having their fun in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott and Heather was Heather Chasen. Commander Shaw was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker and Warrant Officer Hildebrand Pertwee, Taniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. There's an old adage that you should be content with your lot. However, if you're the Admiralty and your lot is a right mob on an island off Portsmouth, the last thing you'll be is content. Anxious, terrified, panic-stricken, possibly, but content, no. In fact, your only hope is to keep them occupied 25 hours a day with extra duties when things get desperate. gentlemen, I trust you've been impressed with all you've seen during your inspection. Impressed is hardly the word, number one. Fascinated, perhaps. Yes, Commander Povey and I have had a feeling we've almost caught someone odd doing something strange, somewhere peculiar, all day. Oh, well, I'm sure you must be mistaken, gentlemen. The only mistake Commander Shaw and I made was not starting two minutes earlier all round. Yes, if I let you take that short cut round the back of the galley, you might have spotted Mr. The... Phillips. <laughs> Would you care to pass the sherry round? But I, I just did, sir, and nobody wanted any more, sir. And uh, oh, <laughs> yes. uh, more sherry, sir? No, thank you. Uh, water biscuits? Sir? Don't overdo it, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> now I understand, sir, as you have already seen the CO, Lieutenant Commander Stanton. We have, but I doubt if he knows it. Why is that, sir? Whilst we tried to discuss naval matters, he chunted on about fishing with live bait from the stern of a cruiser in the East Indies. Oh, I am sure you must have misunderstood, sir. Oh, no, sir. I believe he's very good at it. I think he once caught an East Indian, I believe. <laughs> um, um, uh, more sherry, sir? No. no. Number one, may I draw your attention to the fact that naval estimates have had to be increased again? And it is my opinion that the sole cause of these additional expenditures is the gross inefficiency of this unit. Up at the Admiralty, we reckon you lot cost us more than the rest of the Navy put together. Oh, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration, sir. Why, yes, yes. Uh, not much, but, um... <laughs> yes, yes, a bit. Definitely a bit, yes. For once, Mr. Phillips, I agree with you. You do, sir? Oh, this... this must be my lucky day. <laughs> I wouldn't bank on that. Personally, I've never been able to fathom what possible use this detachment could be over here anyway. Oh, I don't know. If the Isle of Wight ever demands home rule, we could move in a bit sharpish. <laughs> there are times, Mr. Phillips, when you're quite brilliant. Oh, thank you, sir. But that wasn't one of them. <laughs> the fact is, number one, their lordships have decided they'd rather like to see something for their money. Naturally, sir, but I don't quite see how... Well, uh... they do. You've, um, you've heard about the home fleet exercise this week? Of course, sir. Well, you're joining it. What? We're, we're what, sir? You, you mean we're going to sea, sir? You mean actually on the water itself, sir? <laughs> Precisely. It is one of the hazards of being in the Navy, Mr. Phillips. Oh. It is not all beer and skittles. No, sir. It's not all sherry and water biscuits, either. <laughs> I presume you require our frigate, HMS Troutbridge, prepared for action, sir? Of course. 
But I'm agreeably surprised to find that anyone on this unit even remembers that you have a frigate. Well, I'll bet six to four they don't know where it is. <laughs> of course we do, sir. Well, where is it? Uh, more sherry, sir. <laughs> no. no. All right, I'll issue instructions for the trite bridge to be provisioned at once, sir. Well, that shouldn't cause much of a problem. Your store's indents are always so ridiculously excessive, you're bound to have everything. Uh, with the CPO Pertwee in charge of stores, that doesn't necessarily follow, but we'll do our best. Well, he had enough blankets last week to stock a department store. <laughs> he probably has. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, my, my, uh, my foot. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Phillips. Uh, I say, number one, I've just realised what those two pompy idiots were jabbering about. Oh, you're still here. Yes, Stanton, we are, and we are still jabbering, as you put it. Oh, very good of you, sir, very good. Uh, when do we sail, sir? Uh, tomorrow evening at 22.30. We shall join Blue Force at dawn and engage Red Force somewhere in the channel during the day. Uh, any chance of a bit of fishing? <laughs> I very much doubt it, Stanton. Uh, pity. Hardly seems worth going, really. Nevertheless, I trust you will honour us with your company, Stanton, as Commander Shaw and I will also be aboard the Trout Bridge. Oh, well, that settles it. What, sir? Well, I shan't even bother to take me rods. <laughs> I don't want to rush you, Povey, but we'd better be getting back to the mainland fairly soon. Well, certainly. Well, we'll be going, then. Good day, Stanton. Yeah, not bad, is it? Oh, yes, yes. Good day, sir. Good day. Hmm. So saying, they swept out. Yes, very disturbing. Uh, Mr. Phillips, the first thing you'd better do is to see Chief Petty Officer Pertwee at once. Aye, aye, sir. Instruct him to get the trout bridge ready for sailing at 22.30 tomorrow night. Aye, aye, sir. You can also tell him that I don't care if his dear white-haired old mother is visiting him, or if he's broken both his legs, or if he never goes to sea when there's an hour in the month, he's still coming with us. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. On second thoughts, I'll go and tell him myself. Uh, uh, keep an eye on things here until I get back, and if anyone asks you to make a decision... Yes, sir? Don't. <laughs> Yes, Chief. What are you up to, my son? Nothing, Chief. Then you ought to be perishing well ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Why, Chief? For being on your Todd in these stores for 35 minutes without knocking something off. Oh, I wouldn't pinch anything, Chief. Good lad. One of us said it's enough. <laughs> However, let me give you a friendly word of warning, Johnson. Yes, Chief. If I do ever catch you off itching something out of here when my back's turned, yeah. not only will I whip it back, but I'll have your kit as well. Including your drinking mug. Ah, you couldn't do that, Chief. Why not? You've already got me drinking mug. <laughs> I have? And what the blazes are you drinking out of? Me fountain pen top. <laughs> oh, blimey. Trouble is, sometimes me tea trickles out of them little air holes in the sides and up me sleeves. Ah, uh, hard luck. Yeah. You should have intended for a slop bucket and had done with it. <laughs> yes, Chief. Still, let's look on the bright side, Johnson. We know where we are now, don't we? Yeah. Do we, Chief? Yes. One wrong move out of you and I'll bung you on a charge for losing your drinking mug. Thanks very much. Not at all. I'm having a good day. Blimey, you've been fiddling again. Fiddling? Fiddling? Nothing of this sort, my lad. I've been making certain arrangements. Well, if you ask me, that's the same thing. I didn't. And come to think of it, where's your drinking mug? Sorry. Granted, but watch it. <laughs> now, look... You, uh, you may have noticed a certain amount of activity going on in that field behind the jetty this morning. Oh, yes, it's going to be a fairground for a week. It is, Johnson, it is. And thanks to Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, a very bright and lavish spectacle it's going to be and all. Oh, what have you done, Chief? Well, I've come to a little arrangement with the, uh, with the fairground proprietor. And he's agreed to take all his electricity from Pertwee's private power plant. Hey, uh, In exchange, in exchange for a percentage of the takings, I'm... Uh, running a power cable to him from the generators on the frigate. And once I get them going, that fair grain's going to look like a blast furnace from the inside. <laughs> Why didn't he want to use his own generators then? He did. Leastways he did until the sudden and mysterious appearance of a certain notice board smack bang outside his caravan. Go on, what did the board say? WD property, keep off. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what happens if number one sees the cable from the frigate? He'll do his carefully calculated nut. <laughs> However, he's not likely to. The last time anyone went near that frigate was to blow the siren on Mafeking night. <laughs> well, I hope for your sake you're right, Chief. And I hope for your sake you're right and all. Because you're the mug who's going to lay the cable and switch on. 
Yeah, so I thought I was. Good, then you're not disappointed, are you? Now off you go, my laughing lad. You'll find all the gear down by the frigate. Aye, aye, Chief. Chief, number one's on the prowl. Number one always is, mate. I know, but he's coming in here. Take cover! <laughs> ah, there's a surprise. How nice. A surprise, sir? Yes, Chief, you're actually here. As a rule, if I wish to see you, I have to rely on bumping into you whilst you are engaged on one of your um, outside activities. Oh, perfidious, nefarious, and downright villainous as they probably are. Thank you, sir. However, I have a little news for you, Chief, which although I have no confidence that it will succeed in stopping your activities, it may at least restrict them a bit. We're under sailing orders, Chief. I Come again, sir? We're joining the home fleet, Chief. Blimey, what in? In the frigate, Chief, if you have no objection to their lordships borrowing it for a few days. <laughs> oh, oh that, that depends on how much they... Hey, you missed Trout Bridge, sir. Ooh, you can't do that, sir. Why not? Well, I've got to lay the cable to the fairground. Belt up! <laughs> you have to do what, Johnson? Look for his drinking mug, sir. <laughs> Haven't you, Johnson? Yes, Chief. Inspection in ten minutes. Good luck. <laughs> you were saying, sir? Oh, yes. Uh, you will provision ship immediately, Chief. Oh, I right, said, look, but, but uh, with respect, sir, I wouldn't advise... Put into sea. You wouldn't, you? No, sir. Ah, now that's a pity, because I believe that's really why their lordships bought the thing. Yes. <laughs> Will we be away long, sir? Uh, that rather depends on the chief, Johnson. Me, sir? Uh, you, sir. Your little arrangement with the tug's captain to pull us off a jetty last time cost us six months at Falmouth and a refit. Well, accidents will happen, sir. Yes, quite, chief, quite. But we might have stood a better chance if your Uncle Ebenezer Pertwee had had more experience as a tug captain than towing coal through the Manchester Ship Canal. <laughs> but, but, but there weren't any naval tugs available, sir. I thought he was going to do us a favour. Possibly. And until he caught the hook of his anchor in our scuppers and opened up the ship's side like a tin opener, I was most grateful. <laughs> what what Nunky was most upset too, sir. His tug sank and he only got 50 quid compensation. <laughs> well, let us be honest, Chief. If anyone had thrown so much as a matchstick onto that waterlogged hulk, it would have gone down like a stone anyway. Yes, but it couldn't half pull coal, sir. <laughs> it would also rip up a frigate, so let's forget it, Chief. When do we sail then, sir? Ah, well, that, ah, that's a bit of information I propose keeping to myself, Johnson. That way we might even go. Right, I said. I'll provision the ship at once, sir. Very kind of you, Chief. And um, try to remember that we'd like a little food and armament aboard, as well as the housey housey boards. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you, Chief. Carry on. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, uh, and in the event of a westerly wind at sailing time... Uh, don't bother to whistle up one of your aunts in a rowing boat with a bit of clothesline. Uh, we'll manage. Very good, sir. <laughs> Get out of it, you Mickey Taker. <laughs> you won't be wanting me to lay that electric cable for the fair now, then, Chief, will you? Can I have my drinking mug? Yes, I will, and now you can't. <laughs> but you can't use the frigate's generators when we're under sailing orders. Well, my bet is we aren't under them, Johnson. I reckon number one knows I'm up to something and has invented these sailing orders to bung a spanner in the works. Do you really think so, Chief? I hope so, mate. Otherwise, when we cast off, that fair ground is due for a power cut. <laughs> and what's more, the trout bridge is going to blow a large economy-sized fuse. Now, come on, we've got work to do. Come on ashore here. Communications office here, sir. Oh, Lord, where have they posted me now? Oh, nothing like that, sir. A signal from the CNC, sir. Well, don't think that's any better, do you? What is it? A signal reads, Home Fleet Exercise, HMS Trout Bridge will now join Red Force, repeat Red Force, instead of Blue Force. Signal N, sir. Does it? Yes, sir. All Blue Force is going to be Red Force, and all Red Force is going to be Blue Force. Ah, now, that's the sort of ice-cold, calculated, strategic thinking that wins wars for you. <laughs> I wonder what idiot thought that up. I think it was the CNC, sir. Oh, <clears throat> simply brilliant. <clears throat> I'll inform the trout bridge when I get there. Aye, aye, sir. By the way, what's your name? A tactical communication operator, second-class Prout, sir. Congratulations. In my day, though, you'd have been a signalman. This is the atomic age, sir. <laughs> oh, well, of course, that explains everything. I just can't tell you how sorry I am, Heather. 
Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, good. I say, I say you're quite sure it doesn't, aren't you? Quite. I like being asked to go to the fair and ten minutes later being told I have to go on my own. Do you really? What a peculiar thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I, I say, you are annoyed, aren't you, Heather? Whatever makes you think that? Mm, I can tell, you know. I'm not slow. <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. Could I? That was jolly nice of you. <laughs> May I ask why you're not taking me to the fair after all? It's top secret, really, but duty calls me. Well, let's hope it's not calling you the same things as I am. <laughs> now, this is no laughing matter. I'm not sure if you're supposed to know, but, well, um, we are going to see. You're going to see what? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. C. S. E. A. Water. <laughs> All that wet muck out there. <laughs> Good gracious, at last. Thank you. Fat lot, you care that before long I shall be facing the perils of the deep, plowing through shark-infested waters where full fathom five my father lies. <laughs> well, where on earth are you going? About four miles off Worthing. <laughs> oh. I'll put a light in the window. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Phillips, are you engaged? Well, no, sir, we're not even going steady. <laughs> I, I, uh, well, no, sir, no. Oh, good. Well, as it's now almost tea time, you might go down to the stores and inform C.P.L. Pertwee that we sail at 22.30 this evening. Aye, aye, sir. I'll go at once, sir. Very civil of you, Mr. Phillips. I was rather hoping you would. <laughs> That's all right, sir. I'm only too pleased to be of any assistance. Uh, oh. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> well, that's got him going. I wonder if he'll remember what he's gone for when he gets there. I don't suppose so, sir. No, neither do I. Still, the exercise will do him good. Heather. Sir? I'm afraid I shan't be able to take you to the fair after all. Oh. Oh, I am sorry. I was looking forward to it. Still, it doesn't matter. Duty calls, you know. Instead of enjoying your company at the fair, I shall be on the bridge out there, facing a watery grave. For once aboard the lugger, who knows what I... Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, yes, perhaps you're right. I'll see you when we get back. Aye, aye, sir. Hello, extension 35. I say, Heather, I'm at the stores. Well, what about it? Can you remember what number one sent me down here for? <laughs> Chief. No, you can't. I'm busy. Chief, it's gone 2200. Can I cut the power cable to the fairground? Yeah, I suppose you'll have to in a minute. Otherwise, we'll pull half of it into the sea after us. That's right, Chief. Oh, I could spit. That electric light bill could have kept me laughing for a month. Ah, does seem a shame. I've never seen such a bright fair. Yes, yes. I overdid it a bit earlier on. Ah, you mean you opened up the generator a bit too much? Just a bit, yeah. Yeah, the roundabouts were spinning at about 40 knots and light bulbs. They were, the light bulbs were going off like machine guns. <laughs> uh, a certain understandable pride, Johnson. Yeah. I think I can say yeah. that I've made the Aurora Borealis <laughs> yeah. look like a dead torch. <laughs> Have you told the fairground owner what time you're cutting off the power, Chief? No, Johnson, I haven't. It wasn't in the Navy's interest. Oh, well, he's going to know when all the lights go out, isn't he? That's the old point. By then, it'll be too dark for him to find me. <laughs> By the time he gets his own generators going, we'll be further out than he can swim. Well, I hope for your sake you're right, Chief. I hope so for yours and all. <laughs> I told him my name was Johnson. <laughs> Bridge, uh, Sub Lieutenant Phillips speaking. Uh, hang on, I'll ask. Well, what is it, Mr. Phillips? There's a Captain Ebenezer Pertwee with a tug, sir, and he wants to know if you require any assistance, sir. Uh, yes, I'd like him to get up steam and keep going in the opposite direction until his boilers burst. Hi, Isa. Hello. No, we don't. And you. <laughs> Five minutes to sailing time, number one. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. I had noticed, not that I imagined for one moment, that a company as slack and incompetent as this one could possibly get away on time. If we cast off by the end of the week, you'll probably all expect medals. Oh, no, sir. Salvage money would do. <laughs> uh, you can be sure of one thing, Mr. Phillips. No one in their right mind would salvage you. Oh, I don't know. I might melt down rather well. <laughs> 
Oh, look, sir. You can see the roundabouts going round. Yeah, what do you expect it to do? Go up and down? Oh, by the way, sir, is Commander Shaw aboard yet? Oh, he isn't. I saw him earlier ashore, muttering about some signal from the CNC. Then he drifted off on his own somewhere. Well, if he doesn't turn up, you must sail without him. Why, well, I think we'd better do that, sir. Rank is no excuse for unpunctuality, number one. Your orders are to sail at 22.30, and it's almost... What the... <laughs> Good gracious, all the lights have gone out in the fairgrounds, sir. Very observant of you, Mr. Phillips. What you want me to do about it? Nip over and lend them a shilling? <laughs> no, sir, I wouldn't put you to all that trouble, sir. Yeah. Uh, oh, I say. I say, our lights seem to have got a bit brighter now. Yes, yes, they do, don't they? Well, that's very odd. Uh, I wonder if... No, no, they can't be. Just an optical illusion, that's all. Bridge. The number one here. I'm cheap for the opposite part, we, sir. It's 22.30, sir. And we're not moving. We are about to, Chief. You're in a terrible hurry to put to sea all of a sudden, aren't you? Not half. I mean, no, no. No, 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 sir. No. Ooh, no, no, no hurry at all, sir. Any time within the next minute we'll do, sir. I see, yes, yes. I think I'm beginning to see the light. The light, sir. The light, Chief. Oh, blimey, rumble. I may want to see you later, Chief. Uh, a small matter concerning a subscription to the unit comfort funds. Uh, the uh, funds. Uh, carry on. Now then, let's get this bus out of the garage. Uh, stand by all hands. Hmm. Quiet trip so far, sir. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. We haven't knocked over any lighthouses. <laughs> or run amuck through a fishing fleet so far, have we? No, sir. Were you expecting me to? Well, I wouldn't be surprised, sir. After all, we haven't had much practice lately. Mr. Phillips. <laughs> I, uh, no, sir, certainly not. I, well, I was going to say, uh, how about a mug of cocoa, sir? Uh, Mr. Phillips, I sometimes wish you hadn't learnt all your seamanship from Jack Hawkins. <laughs> These days, on board ship, it's possible to have tea with milk uh, and sugar in a cup and a saucer with a spoon. On, on a tray, sir. Uh, aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Number one, can you tell me why Lieutenant Commander Stanton, as captain of this ship, has yet to make an appearance on this bridge? Well, uh, uh, no, sir. I'm sure he'll be up at first light. Mm, shall I go and fetch him, sir? I know where he is. Where? Well, he's fishing off the stand, sir, and he hasn't caught us. A... Oh, I say. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Yeah, perhaps we'd better get some cocoa after all, Mr. Phillips. Aye, aye, sir. And drown in it. Well, oh, sir, but I don't like cocoa. <laughs> hey, Mr. Phillips. Are we now on station number one? Uh, we are, sir. In a few moments, you'll be able to see the rest of Blue Force. It's almost dawn, sir. I have a watch, number one. Oh, Thank you. Of course, sir. I didn't know if it was going. <laughs> Wouldn't dare not to. <laughs> Your flying Blue Force flag, I trust? Uh, the yeoman has been ordered, sir. Extraordinary. We're afloat, in the right place, and properly dressed. It can't last. <laughs> 0600, sir. Exercise commence. Good grief! What the place is it? Action stations! What's going on, Adam? Where's the enemy? It isn't the enemy, sir. Blue Force has opened up on us by mistake. Uh, excuse me, sir. It isn't Blue Force, sir. They are flying Red Force. Sir, we seem to have joined the wrong fleet. Mm. I said it couldn't last. Of all the bungling, idiotic... Uh, quite, sir. Is the navigator about it all? Well, not if he's got any sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bridge, uh, Sub-Lieutenant Phillips here. What? Oh. Oh. Oh, Lord. Well, what is it, Mr. Phillips? A signal from the CNC, Red Force, sir. Signal reads, you've received 16 salvos and four torpedoes. Admit sunk unless made of rubber. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. Uh, make a signal, admit sunk by last torpedo... All others near misses are condolences. Aye, aye, sir. And so ends our part in the exercise, I suppose. Well, I'm afraid so, sir. It's a bit short, but it was exciting while it lasted, wasn't it? <laughs> Alter course, Coxon. We're returning to base. Who did it? That's what I want to know. Who did it? Uh, Stanton, I had no idea you were the one. I jolly nearly wasn't. Who did it? Did, did what, sir? Let off all those blasted guns. Do you realise what's happened? No, sir. Well, they frightened the life out of me. I've dropped my rod overboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Good luck, Stanton. I'll speak to the Admiral about it for you. Oh, no, no, don't bother. I've got another. <laughs> Bridge, number one speaking. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's compliments, sir, but we're going the wrong way. I beg your pardon, Chief? We've turned the belt, sir. Permission to use the emergency steering, sir. No, Chief, you can relax. Strangely enough, we are aware which way the ship is heading. But we're heading back to the island, sir. That's correct, Chief. We're sunk. Blimey, I don't know if you are, but I am. <laughs> yes, I had a feeling you might be. Oh, sir. Yeah, well, Chief. Uh, permission to lower the sea boat, sir. Lower a boat? What for? Me. No, Chief. <laughs> but I can't go back to the island for a bit, sir. I have news for you, Chief. Not only can you, you are. Now, stop this nonsense at once. If you have some sort of um, domestic difficulty on the island, you must uh, make light of it. Make light of it? Stop me. Four hundred gypsies on to the teeth, and now he makes jokes. <laughs> Ah, well, it's nice to be back on uh, terra firma. Hmm? More sherry, anyone? For the umpteenth time, no thanks. And you. scrub round the water biscuits too, Mr. Phillips. Oh, aye, aye, sir. Um, uh, sir? No, Chief, you can't have compassionate leave. Uh, uh, but it, it's imperative, sir. My dear white-haired old mother, sir. Has broken but... both her legs in three places through you going to sea when there was an hour in the month, I suppose. Oh, have I used that one before, sir? Oh. <laughs> I've only one last thing to say. Oh, good. Oh, Mr. Phillips. Ah, uh, sir. Cease. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have just received a signal from the CNC of the exercise. Really, sir? Good news, I trust. No, wait, thumping well wasn't. <laughs> Thanks to your crass stupidity culminating in what will probably be described as the shortest naval engagement on record, I shall be on the carpet of the Admiralty and receiving rockets for weeks. Oh, what a shine. <laughs> <laughs> I am touched by your deep concern, Chief. And given half a chance, I shall drag you and everyone else here into the muck with me. Yeah, well, with due respect, sir, I'm still completely mystified as to what happened. What were Red Force doing there? We were on correct station, sir. In that case, I suppose the whole of Red Force weren't. Number one. Are you suggesting that out of the entire fleet, the Trout Bridge was the only ship in the right place? Uh, well, it would seem so, sir. <laughs> Unless some idiotic poop at the Admiralty didn't pass on a signal. I say, I'm terribly sorry, you chaps. I didn't pass on a signal. <laughs> Good gracious, it's Commander Poop. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> signal? What signal? From the CNC. Red Force were to be called Blue Force and vice versa. You were to be part of Red Force. Ah, the light dawns. Do you mind, sir? <laughs> Commander Shaw. Do you realize that through not passing on that signal, we were sunk in less than two minutes, and I'm for the high jump of the CNC? Well, hard luck, old man, but it wasn't my fault, you know. Not your fault? No. I was at the fair. You were what? At the fair. Uh, a permission to leave, sir? No, Chief. Oh. Do you mean to tell us that whilst we were on the exercise, you were at a, a, a fairground? Well, yes, I, I didn't have much choice. Just before you sailed, there was a whacking great power cut. Uh, right, well, if you'll excuse me, sir. <laughs> You'll be quiet, Chief. Under pressure, sir, yes. What has that power cut got to do with it? Well, I was stuck on top of the big wheel. Oh, good grief. I've been there all night. <laughs> Terrifying it was. It's unbelievable. Well, I did my best, old man. I tried to pass on the signal in Morse with matches. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Burnt my fingers in the end. Look. Oh, I say, I say, it's nasty, isn't it, really? Mary, if you don't mind, I'd like to get back to the mainland in order to make my report as soon as possible. Oh, must you? Oh, very well, we'll push off then. I'm sorry about this, number one. Uh, goodbye. Ah! Ah, phew. Cool. Permission to leave, sir? By all means, Chief. Oh. And uh, take a compulsory 48 hours pass. Oh, thank you very much, sir. I have a complete explanation as to the accidental use of the generator, which will be entirely to your satisfaction, sir. You see... Uh, Pow, sir. Uh, yes, Chief. And on our way out of the main gate, I understand you'll meet a Mr. Antonio Grimbanelli and some friends of his who wish to see you very urgently. I'm not going, I'll get lynched. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll put the big wheel over my head and they'll spin it. Enjoy your leave, Chief. Grand morning, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, 
that was Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, and Heather was Heather Chasen. Commander Shaw was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, and communication operator Prout, Taniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alastair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. We all have our financial worries, whether it's the rent which can't be due again already, the HP payment on that car which collapsed when you got it home, or the demands of that thieving little meter that the gas board tucked away under the stairs when you weren't looking. Well, our naval detachment on the island of Portsmouth also have difficulties in making ends meet. Naturally, their books balance absolutely perfectly. The, the problem is to make them balance sufficiently well to have enough over to buy the wardroom gin without being caught when the books are inspected. Ah, good morning, Heather. Good morning, Mr. Phillips. I say, you've got a lot of letters there. Who are they for? Me. As a matter of fact, they're birthday cards. Oh, I see. It's somebody's birthday. Anyone I know? Well, mine, actually. Yours? Oh, good gracious. <laughs> I say, that's absolutely, um, well, that is, uh, good health. Uh, uh, Bung-ho. I, I mean, uh, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, 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 no, no, one, no Trump. Uh, I... Many happy returns. Yes, thanks very much. I'm 33. I, I... <laughs> Number one wants you. There's a buzzer again. A buzzer? Oh, so it is. Uh, again? That's the fourth time. Oh, Lord, I'd better answer it at once. Well, come in. You buzzed, sir? Yes, Mr. Phillips, I buzzed. <laughs> you slept well? Yes, thank you, sir. You had a good breakfast? Excellent, sir. Splendid. Oh. <laughs> and you, sir? Alas, no, Mr. Phillips. Whilst you've been snoring and gorging, I've been buzzing. Oh, dear. <laughs> when I wasn't buzzing, I was thinking, Mr. Phillips. Oh, that's a novelty for a sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thinking, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, thinking that either I need a louder buzzer or a new sub-lieutenant. Hmm. A very difficult decision. Now, I've received a signal from Commander Povey informing me that he is coming over to audit the unit accounts. Oh, that'll be a labour of love, sir. Uh, <laughs> as you say, Mr. Phillips, it might also be a little uh, delicate when he delves into the unit comfort fund. Comfort fund? Well, surely that can't be in the red, sir. And why not? Well, sir, Chief Petty Officer Pertwee reckons his contributions alone will keep the Bank of England going for a year. It's possible, and that's where the trouble lies. The unit comfort fund is not only solvent, its coffers are filled to bursting point. In fact, the credit balance is frankly embarrassing. Oh. Contributions either given or um, extracted have simply poured in, but I seem to have omitted to uh, purchase anything out of it. <laughs> I had notice. Well, uh, <laughs> I imagine CPO Pertwee has too. Yes, sir. He says the last comfort that came out of that fund was a yo-yo when there were fourpence and nobody knew what they were. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. It was sixpence and I knew... Well, I know one thing the fun could do, sir. It's Heather's birthday, so it ought to give her a present. Excellent, Mr. Phillips. It might solve the problem of getting rid of the surplus money, sir. Getting rid of it? What are you suggesting we buy her, a yacht? Well, that would be rather nice, sir. I mean, she's fond of sailing and she spends a lot of her leave... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Phillips, there are times when I wish you'd stop talking long enough to say something. <laughs> I know, sir. What about a birthday party? The comfort pun, fun, I mean, the, the pun, <laughs> I'm all tied up, sir. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Phillips. Uh, the comfort fund could pay for it, sir, but uh, put Chief Petty Officer Pertwee in charge of the catering and you'll be in the clear. Yeah, Mr. Phillips, the intention is to reduce the capital in the comfort fund, not dispose of it entirely. <laughs> well, I can't think of anything else, sir. Well, neither can I, so we'll do it. I'll go and see CPO Pertwee at once. Close, try again tomorrow. <laughs> Gee, I was just wondering, when do these stores open? Well, I could tell you that, Johnson. 
over Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's dead body. But aren't we supposed to issue things? I do, orders. And here's a right one for you. Johnson, I have a little surprise for you. I can't afford it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> now, look, you're getting a 48-hour pulse complete with railway warrant. How much? How much? How much? Johnson, are you suggesting that I charge you for a railway warrant? Yes, Chief. Last time you charged me ten bob more than a first-class fare. <laughs> now, look, Johnson, this time there's no charge whatsoever. Do you mean you're actually going to give me a railway warrant? I am. To scart the flow. What? But I live in Endon. There's a lucky boy. You'll pass it twice. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to go to scarf a flow for? Me. It so happens, Johnson, that a relative of mine out here... Oh, me another it, one. Yes. <laughs> this relative of mine is uh, one or two little items short in his stores up there, you oh, see? Oh, he's a relative of yours, all right, then. Down, find out, down. <laughs> uh, look, he's got an inspection shortly. Yeah. So as we happen to have one or two little items uh, he needs, you're going to take them up to him. Am I? Yeah. The crates are all packed. Crates? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have a good dinner. They're flaming heavy. <laughs> Why don't you send them up by goods train? There isn't time, mate. This stuff has got to be there Thursday or the court-martial starts Friday. <laughs> well, why don't you go? I would, Johnson. I would. I would, willingly. There's a slight snag. Yeah. The dockyard police at Portsmouth and I have come to a slight arrangement. <laughs> What's that, then? As soon as I step off the launch, they run me in and find out what for afterwards. <laughs> But even when you got the pass. Especially when I got the pass. <laughs> Born voyage. It's number one. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Oh, I can assure you, sir, I had nothing to do with it, sir. Nothing at all. Really, really, really? Nothing to do with what? Uh, well, nothing to do with nothing, sir. Uh -huh. Dull for you. Uh, Chief, it has come to my notice that it is Heather's birthday. Oh, is that so, sir? Many happy returns of the day, then, sir. Oh, thank you very much. I'm 30 under 30. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I was going to say that it has been decided to purchase a birthday present for her out of the unit comfort fund. Hey, just a minute. Do, do, do you mean you're, you're actually taking money out of the comfort fund? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Furthermore, Chief, I want you to spend the money for us. Me? Yes, Chief. You're putting more legs, sir, of course. I'm <laughs> putting more leg. <laughs> oh, very funny. <laughs> putting more leg. <laughs> Johnson? Yes, Chief? Laugh! <laughs> Chief. <laughs> I'm perfectly serious. I'm allocating a certain amount out of the comfort fund to get Heather a present. I see. All right. All right, sir. All right. Now then, what, what, what can I get her for a tanner? Uh, <laughs> the comfort fund is being considerably more generous than that, Chief, and we felt that your um, peculiar talents for uh, trading, you'd be the best man to find out what Heather would like and uh, buy it. I don't like this. Don't like it a bit. No! No, I don't like it. There's a dirty great snag somewhere. Yes, but, um, there is one other thing. All right, all right, here it comes. The unit comfort fund is also holding a party for her this evening. Yes, I thought it might, yeah. Ticket to the same price as usual, of course. No, but... no, Chief. Admission will be free. Yeah, hey, come again. There will be no charge for admission and all drinks and refreshments will be on the house. Oh, I see, sir. Um, but uh, could I ask a question? By all means, sir. With all due respect, sir, but um, have you gone stark raving bonkers? <laughs> and no, chief, I have not. Oh, then it's me. Oh, what a shame. Get back, you vulture. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, uh, Johnson, I shall expect to see you at the party as well, of course. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible, sir. Impossible? Why? Well, I've only got 48 hours to get up to Scarpa with some crates of stuff. Bouncer! <laughs> Yes, well, I see. Well, I don't know what you intended to do this evening, Johnson, but unless I see you at the party, I shall make full inquiries as to where you were. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, but, but, sir... And why? I'll see you ten, sir. Splendid. Now get weaving on the purchase of the present, Chief. I oh, I said... Uh, something about a fiver will do very nicely. Yeah, well, I should be able... Uh, a fiver? A fiver. Carry on, Chief. Grand morning, isn't it? <laughs> Stung me. A fiver and a free party. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Why not, Chief? 
There's a load of muck flying about somewhere, and I don't know which way to duck. <laughs> Chief? Yeah? Chief, what are you going to do about that relative of yours at Scarpa Flow? Hope he knows a good lawyer, my son. He's going to need one. <laughs> now then, what have we got in this store that Heather would like as a present? You better make a list, Johnson. Come on. Now, go on, take this down. Right, old Chief. Uh, here, wait a minute. Where'd you get that pen? Well, it's me own. It writes underwater. How do you know? It says so on the guarantee. Well, watch it or I may shove you off the jetty to prove it. <laughs> Nardy. Nardy, what we got? What have we got? You're in, Commander Purvis? Yes, what on earth's happened to Commander Shaw? Hasn't he arrived yet? He could have walked here from the Admiralty by now. Well, I understand he's on his way here from the main gate, sir. Well, where the devil has he been? London train got in an hour ago. I'm sure I couldn't say, sir. Perhaps he's been having a chat with the driver. Well, knowing Commander Shaw, I should think that's more than likely. Ah, <clears throat> good morning, Povey. Sorry I'm late, but I've been having a chat with the train driver. <laughs> I see. He's happy in his work, I trust. Not very, no. Says all that diddly-dum, diddly-dum, diddly-dum. Gets on his nerves. Commander Shaw, in case you had forgotten, we are supposed to be auditing the island detachment's accounts today. Of course I haven't forgotten. I have sent a signal to the island informing them we shall be over to do an audit and we shall require their books to be prepared and in order. If they are, it'll be the first time ever. Well, what do you mean? The only books they're interested in are the What Won the 330, Any to Come, Glad of It variety. <laughs> I see. Well, if their books aren't in order, they'll have plenty to come, all right. But I doubt if they'll be glad of it. Are you ready? Well, Mr. Phillips, are you in a festive mood in readiness for tonight's party? Absolutely bursting at the seams. Uh, well, simmer down. The party isn't until tonight. Ah. Has CPO Poetry got the present yet, sir? He's on his way round here now. I had to turn down several ideas he had for a somewhat um, novel gift. Novel, sir? Uh, yes. Under the heading of uh, something for a uh, bottom drawer, sir, he tried a set of mess tins, <laughs> blankets, a squeegee, and in a moment of sheer desperation, a hammock. <laughs> Hardly feminine, were they, sir? <laughs> no, Mr. Phillips. I mean, um, what would Heather look like? I mean, wrapped in blankets, swinging in a hammock, eating out of a mess tin with a squeegee. <laughs> I'm sure she would look absolutely exquisite, Mr. Phillips. Oh, lummy. How's that for a vivid imagination? <laughs> Come in. Uh, Chief, Petty Officer Pertby reported, sir. Ah, you have the present? Uh, yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Only uh, it was five guineas, actually, sir. Oh, never mind. The comfort fund won't baggle over a few paltry shillings. I don't get it. It's done its that over the farthing up to now. <laughs> the times change, Chief. Well, what do you think of the present? Oh, absolutely first class, sir. Oh, I'm glad you approve, sir. Uh, it has one very unusual feature, sir, which might be very useful for anyone in the Navy, sir. What's that? It writes underwater, sir. <laughs> Does it really? How deep? Oh, I'll well, have to ask Abel Seaman Johnson that, sir. You see, he... He used to have one. <laughs> uh, shall I ask Heather to come in now, sir? Certainly, Mr. Phillips. Oh, Chief, about this party tonight. Uh, yes, sir. I want you to attend to the catering arrangements. Uh, supply the wines, gin, and so on. Well, out of my own pocket. I'll be ruined. 17 and a tenner for a bottle of scotch. No, 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 relax, Chief. Uh, the comfort fund is paying. Oh, that's different, sir. Yes, we don't want the entire ship's company queuing up with straws round a bottle of milk. <laughs> what, the comfort fund's paying for the wallop and all? Yes, Chief. I can't stand this suspense any longer, sir. Suspense, true? Yes, sir. I feel as if... I feel as if I'm holding a bomb for a bloke who forgot to tell me what time it was going to blow up. <laughs> All in good time, Chief. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Hello, Chief. Are you just going off? Uh, yes, he is, Mr. Phillips. But he doesn't know what time. <laughs> you wanted to see me, sir? Yes, Heather. Many happy returns of the day. Oh, thank you, sir. And Mr. Phillips and I would like you to accept this little gift. Many happy returns, Heather. Oh, thank you. Oh, a pen. Oh, it's just what I wanted. I say, is it really? <laughs> it writes underwater, you know. Oh, does it? 
I'm sure that'll be terribly useful. Yeah. All you need now is some waterproof paper. <laughs> well, I, I just don't know what to say. You shouldn't have spent all your money like this. No, I had no I idea you were so fond of me. You're both very naughty. Who's been talking? I, I'm... <laughs> I can't get over it. Fancy spending all that money on me. Oh, but we didn't spend any. <clears throat> Mr. Phillips, perhaps you'd like to go along to the main hall and see whether it's been got ready for the party this evening. What? Oh, yes, sir, yes. Oh, yes, I would. I would. I would. Oh, desperately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right away. I, I, right away, sir. Party? What party, sir? Oh, for you, Heather, in honor of your birthday. And I wondered if I might escort you. For me? But I didn't know anything about it. I... I can't believe it. Of course you can, sir. I'd love you to escort me. Splendid. I'll pick you up outside the Wren quarters about eight then, shall I? I'll be ready, sir. If you are, you'll be the first woman that ever was. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, Halle, number one here. The jetty guard here, sir. Pompey launch approaching, sir. Oh, good gracious. I I'd forgotten about Commander Shaw and Povey. Shall I start gunnery practice, sir? They're within range. Uh, they're, no, 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 not this time. Let them land. Aye, aye, sir. Not bad news, sir. Ghastly. Inspection party from Portsmouth is about to land. I must inform CPO Poetry at once. I like to give him a supporting chance uh, sometimes. Uh, you better get him on the phone. Look, how many more times, Johnson? How many more times? I'll tell you, I haven't seen your pen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was here before you went out. It's the one that writes underwater. Then you must have left it somewhere. Look in the bath. <laughs> you sure you haven't got it, Chief? Of course, I'm sure I'm positive. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Look, give me a couple of days and I'll get you another one just like it. Wholesale. Aye, aye, you have got it. No, I haven't. <laughs> but you'll get it in a minute right between the flaming ears. Now, cork it up. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Why, what's up then? Where's the trouble? I don't know, Johnson. I don't know. I've, I've just drawn every penny out of the comfort fund and spent it on wallop. Oh, number one will go up the wall. Number one told me to. What, go up the wall? No, you <laughs> need Spend the comfort funds you've got in games. Johnson, there's something fishy going on. I know. Someone's whipped me pen. Will you shut up about that pen? Well, it writes underwater. I know it writes underwater. <laughs> But if I find it, I'll shove it down your throat and empty the ink until it comes out of your ears. Stores here, we're closed. No, you're not, Chief. Oh, aren't we? No, uh, we are about to receive visitors, Chief. Visitors? What visitors, sir? The inspection party from Pompey, Chief. Hey, oh, they're not due again yet. I've only just got over the last one. <laughs> they're likely, but this time they'll be inspecting the books, not the stores. They're doing an audit. An audit? An, mm. an, an audit? An audit? <laughs> Oh, I see, sir. An audit. Yes, I see. Yeah, I've got it now, sir. Yes. Good. yes, good chief. I was afraid of that. Yes, oh, yes, sir. Everything adds up very nicely now. Does it, chief? Yes, sir. Grand morning, isn't it? Uh, 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 yes, carry on. Hi, I said. Johnson, I got it. Oh, thanks, Chief. Where was it? Where was what? My pen, of course. I'm not talking about your ballpoint pen. I mean, I, I, I mean, I know why the comfort fund has been lashing out. The books are being audimitimified. 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 Yes. <laughs> thanks to Chief Billy Officer Pert, we cease this efforts to spend the lolly. The books are in the clear. Oh, very noble of you, Chief. Thank you, Johnson. I'm glad you appreciate it. I just wish that. Uh... While you were getting rid of all that money, you'd bought me another pen. Look, will you wrap out about that perishing pen? I told you, I'll get you another one. Well, it used to write underwater. All right, all right, it wrote underwater. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll get you one that if you fill it up with water, it writes under ink. <laughs> now then, I'll go and get it right away. I just don't understand it. How these books could have got into this state is beyond me. Well, well, what seems to be wrong with them, sir? Absolutely nothing. It's a miracle. No, it isn't, Povey. What do you mean? Don't you remember? You sent them a signal telling them we were coming. 
Silly Billy. <laughs> I take it you've completed your audit, gentlemen? Very nearly. We haven't seen the books for the unit comfort fund yet. Well, then I should quit while the game's good, sir. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, shall, I, um, shall I get them for you, sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Phillips. Aye, aye, sir. Oh. You know what number one's trouble is, don't you, Heather? Yes, Mr. Phillips, he told me. Mm. It's you. Yeah, thanks very much. How's the audit going? Oh, fine. They've only got the comfort fund to have a go at now. Oh, dear. That's torn it. Oh, no, 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 it's all right. Well, there must be a fortune in it. No, not now, not since we drew the money out to pay for the party and your present. Uh, My present? Oh, 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 law. But I thought you'd... Uh, we did, oh, yes. Do you mean that it wasn't from you and number one at all? You just got it to get the comfort fund right before the audit. Yes, <laughs> it's a good idea, wasn't it? <laughs> No, no, it wasn't. No, no, no I, that, that is... Uh, well, if you look at it another way, I mean, on, on, the, on the other hand, I, <clears throat> I say, Heather. Well? May I escort you to the party tonight? No, I've already... Oh. Hmm. Yes, that's quite an idea. All right, Leslie. You can meet me outside the Wren quarters at eight o'clock. I say, can I really? Well, that'd be wonderful. It should be pretty good, yes. <laughs> I don't feel quite so badly about one thing now. No, what's that? Well, I wasn't going to mention it, but I've lost my pen. What, already? Yes. You see, when Chief Petty Officer Pertwee was here a few moments ago... I... <laughs> what, what, what did he want? Oh, he just came in to wish me many happy returns. Oh, how jolly nice of him. Yes. Now, the funny thing is that when I was going to show him the pen, I, I couldn't find it. <laughs> One, I'm very concerned about this comfort fund account. You are, sir? Well, it should be in order. Oh, it's in order, all right. Ah, splendid. But there isn't anything in it. We ought to try and build the fund up a bit, you know. Yes. Why don't you try running a few social evenings with raffles and that sort of thing? Well, the thought had occurred to me, sir. Well, see what can be done. Uh, yes, sir. CPO Pertwee will be for a start. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're having a party here tonight, sir. We should be delighted if you would stay for it. Oh, we'd love to, wouldn't we, Povey? Hmm? No. Oh, well, I suppose it might be a good idea. Give us a chance to show you how to raise a bit of money for that comfort fund. Splendid, splendid. I shall be a most willing pupil. I look forward to seeing you there, gentlemen. Can't we meet in the wardroom first? Oh, much as I'd love to, sir. If you'll excuse me, I've already promised to pick up our guest of honour at eight o'clock. Oh, very well, then. We'll go to the wardroom on our own, sure, shall we? Why don't you look where you're going? Oh, uh, you, Mr. Phillips. Well, uh, what are you doing outside the Wren Quarters, eh? Me? Uh, these are the Wren Quarters? Good Lord. Indeed they are. <laughs> uh, uh, nothing, sir. Just taking the, uh, the air, sir. Oh, well, uh, kind of take it somewhere else. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's jolly good round here, sir. It's mm. um, invigorating. <sighs> Who do you think you are, Mr. Phillips? Nature boy? <laughs> no, sir. No, no. No. What are you doing here, sir? Hmm? Waiting for someone? No, well, me? No, no, no. Just <laughs> taking the air. <sighs> Wonderful stuff, isn't it, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Champagne, Mr. Phillips. Champagne. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. <coughs> you were going to say something? No, no, no. no, no, no. Um. <laughs> Champagne. I've already said that. Oh, yes, I so you do. What time is it, Mr. Phillips? What? Uh, oh, it's, um, it's five past, um, five past eight, sir. Five right past? Yes, yeah, five past, sir. Oh, uh, five past, eh? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Five past, sir. Still? Uh, five and a half, sir. Are you sure you're not waiting for someone, sir? No, 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 I'm not waiting for anybody. Are you? No, 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 sir. No, no. Just taking the, uh, the air, sir. Ha-ha! <laughs> Champagne! <laughs> Champagne, sir. Champagne! <laughs> 
Yeah, it's six minutes past, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Lieutenant Price, sir, Mr. Phillips, I, I was afraid you wouldn't still be here. Uh... Oh, what is it, Goldstein? Hmm? I, uh, I've got a message from Heather, sir. No, oh, that'll be for me. me. It's, uh, <laughs> it's for both of you, sir. Uh, here it is. Yeah, thank you. I don't know about taking the air, Mr. Phillips. We seem to have been given it. Given it, sir? Uh, yes, this says, um, dear both. Hope you've had a nice chat. Would have let you know I wasn't coming before, but couldn't find the pen the Comfort Fund bought me. Heather. <laughs> oh. Comfort Fund bought me is heavily underlined. Now, I wonder who told her the Comfort Fund paid for it, eh? Champagne, sir. It's terribly invigorating. <laughs> Mr. Phillips. Yes, it's uh, eight minutes past, sir. <laughs> Champagne, sir. <laughs> I say, Heather, I'm terribly sorry to hear you've lost that pen. Great shame. It's all right, sir. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's going to get me one just like it wholesale. Oh. Good show. I, I say, would you, um, would you care to dance? Oh, I'd love to. But the band's not playing. Isn't it? Oh, no, it is. <clears throat> uh, let's have a drink. Come on. Johnson, join the party. Oh, yes, she's a bit of all right, aren't you, lovey? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you blithering bumpkin, I'm talking about the jollity. Oh, yes, she, yes. Oh, and thanks for getting this pen for me. I'll give you the two quid on payday. Yes! That's all right, Johnson, you will. I shall deduct it at the source if I get out the chance. <laughs> it's exactly like the one I lost. Same colour and everything. Yeah, of course it is. Pertwee always looks after his friends. Yeah. Well, well, come on, let's get it. The wallet was still on the house, eh? <laughs> This is where Chief Petty Officer Pertwee gets his own back on the comfort fund. <laughs> Come on in. Ah, there you are, Chief. Enjoying yourself? Yes, thank you so much. Smashing party, sir. Uh, Commander Pertwee has been most impressed with the audit, uh, haven't you, sir? Yes. The books, they actually balance. Well, sir. It's incredible. They don't think it's been easy, sir. <laughs> Even I couldn't spend all that time in this. No, 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 quite so, Chief. No, quite so, Chief. Now, as this is a free evening, I'm sure you'd like to have some raffle tickets. Oh, of course, sir. Yeah, naturally, sir. As many as you like. Splendid. Shall we say 30 tickets, sir? Ah, maybe 35, you like, sir. In for a penny, in for a pound. Sir, yes, the chief, and you're in for 35 pounds. They're a pound each. Oh, they really, sir. I don't know how you could do it at the price. Well, I don't what? <laughs> a pound each, chief. The comfort fund is extremely grateful. A splendid contribution. Isn't it, sir? How did it happen? That's what I want to know. How did it happen? <laughs> what happened? You see, number one, just a little initiative is all that's needed to build up your comfort fund. Build it up? Brilliant idea of Commander Purvis, Chief. Can't think why it never occurred to me. Stun me. 35 quid straight down the drain. And if you don't win this week, you might be lucky next. Next week, sir. Yes, the Comfort Fund will be running social evenings every week now, Chief. Yes, yes, I thought it would. Oh, no yes. raffles, spot prizes, lucky, lucky dips. dips. Yeah, quid each. Lovely, lovely. lovely. Treasure hunts. Yeah, with no treasure, I know. Yes, yes. And admission by tickets. Yeah, only. quid each. It's a carve up. I've been shocked this one. Oh, yes, of course. Invite all your friends, Chief. Grand evening, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> That was Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, and Heather was Heather Chasen. Commander Shaw was Michael Bates, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, and Goldstein was Tenniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> Most people agree that exercise does you good. However, if the exercise is a naval one with the home fleet, our island detachment are unanimously agreed that it's liable to do them no good whatsoever. A sentiment fully shared by Commander Povey, the inspecting officer from Portsmouth. Look, 
Commander Shaw, I'm really looking forward to this exercise. You would. Well, aren't you? No, Commander Povey, I'm not. You know how I hate being on the water. Why they can't hold naval exercises on land is beyond me. Oh. <laughs> really? Well, well, why don't you suggest they hold exercises in dry dock? I did. They turned it down flat. You surprised me. They were quite rude about it. Said something about the whole object of an exercise was to prove mobility. Then why don't you suggest they put wheels under all our ships so that we can have frigates and destroyers pooping off at each other up and down the Great West Road? <laughs> Would be rather fun, wouldn't it? Number one gun ready. Boom. Boom. I've missed a battleship, but I've got a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Very funny. However, with all due respect, I would remind you that we are to be observers in this exercise, and it is a task I intend to treat with gravity. Oh, so do I, old man. I only wish I was sure exactly whom I'm supposed to observe doing what. I can't find my briefcase, and I had all the data in it. Data? <laughs> yes, data. I'd made a little list divided into two parts, them who's with us and them who's against us. <laughs> no. Reef. Well, there's one frigate you need have no doubts about, even without your data. Oh, which is that? Troutbridge. With that shower from the island detachment aboard her, we'll know exactly whose side she's on. Whose? Theirs. <laughs> True enough. One thing, if we have to go to sea, I'd rather go in anything than Troutbridge. Why? What's wrong with her? Nothing at all. It's that mob on board. I've been on exercises with them before, you know. The worst time was when we went to Gibraltar. Uh, what happened? Did they hit the rock full on? No, no. Just a glancing blow, actually. <laughs> but I went ashore to make sure the monkeys were still there. And were they? Rather splendid little chaps. Got to know them quite well. We shared nuts. <laughs> Troutbridge was a jib for some time, I gather. No, Troutbridge wasn't, but I was. The blighter sailed without me. Sailed without you? Yes, jolly inconvenient. All my gear was aboard and I only had sixpence on me. Well, how on earth did you manage? I played the violin in a cafe for a week, then hitchhiked home on a banana boat. <laughs> I see. Well, in that case, I'm sure you will be as pleased as I shall if Troutbridge makes one false move in this exercise. Because if they do, we'll court-martial every single man aboard. I don't suppose they've even started to prepare ship yet. men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and the bottle of rum. Mr. Phillips. Fifteen yo-yos on the Manchester Tum Tum. <laughs> uh, oh bother. <laughs> you've, uh, you've put me off. Well that's what I was hoping. Sorry but we're um, we're going to see you now. I'd never have guessed. What do you mean? Well in the last five minutes you've been through Sea Fever, Old Man River, the Sky Boat song which got dangerously high for you. Yes, yes it did rather. <laughs> <laughs> and the grand finale of Steamboat Bill. Well, it's a sort of medley, you know. Me. Me, me, me. Me, 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 me. Never mind about me, 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 me. That's number one, and he wants you, 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 you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, so he does. Um, hearts of Oak. Bon, 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 <clears> Mr. Phillips, one. please. Oh, yes, of course. No CC, I shan't do, Sam. Come into the garden, Maud. Oh, come in. You buzzed, Maud? Uh, I mean, you... <laughs> you, um, you buzzed, sir? Uh, yes, Mr. Phillips, I buzzed. Uh, now then, as our navigating officer took the precaution to go on leave before this exercise, I am reluctantly forced to employ your services in that capacity, Mr. Phillips. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, this time, would you be so good as to remember to bring the navigating charts with you? I was absolutely certain they were on board last time, sir. Uh, well, they weren't. I remember we had to navigate by following the Isle of Wight ferry boat for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> then we, um, we had to work our way gingerly along the coast until you spotted a day trip steamer to get behind. <laughs> and we then spent the night waiting for a fishing fleet to complete their haul before showing us the way back. Well, sir, we, uh, we didn't run aground. Yeah, well, we didn't go anywhere near where we were supposed to be either. <laughs> uh, somehow, we've got to keep out of trouble. As I hear, Commander Shaw and Commander Povey are to be observers on the destroyer Makepeace. And something tells me that our frigate is the only one that'll be deserving. Yes, quite so, sir. I mean, aye, aye, sir. <laughs> yes. 
Then you'd better keep a constant butcher's over CPO Pertwee. Because if anyone is going to drop us in it, it's going to be him. Where is he now, sir? He should be in Tridebridge, but wherever he is, you could be sure he'll be doing one of two things. What's that, sir? Lounging or scrounging, or if possible, both. <laughs> I'll go and find out which, sir. Well, don't be ridiculous, Mr. Phillips. No one has ever been able to catch him at either, and goodness knows I've tried, I've tried. <laughs> Abel Seaman Johnson, Chief. I don't care if it's Captain Bly, flutter all. <laughs> Chief, I, I got something to give you. Will I like it? Yes. Ain't a friend. <laughs> well, where's Pertwee's present then? Oh, it's, it's not a present, Chief. It's, it's a message from a tugboat captain alongside. Oh, you better not repeat it. I've had a very delicate upbringing. No, this one says he's a relative of yours. Oh, yeah, of course. That'll be Uncle Ebenezer. He always turns up and we put to sea. Why? Well, we're good for trade, my son. That's why. As soon as number one hauls up the anchor, no key chugs along his stern, waiting to pull us off the nearest sandbank. <laughs> At a price, of course. Does number one always get stuck on the sandbank, then? Aren't you forgetting something, my lad? What? <laughs> I'm the coxswain. <laughs> oh, blimey, don't stand a chance, do he? Not much, no. Uh, oh, I understand your uncle's message now. Oh, uh, what was it? What oh, she bumps see you on the Goodwins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, that's where he's wrong. I doubt if number one's going anywhere near him. What? Well, we met Nunky there last time. Oh, how much, how much did you make? Nothing. Nunky was so busy pulling us off, he got his own tug stuck on. <laughs> oh, what happened then? Well, number one pulled him off with Troutbridge. At the price, of course. <laughs> Number one learns quick, doesn't he? Number one doesn't learn quick, my lad. He usually knows already. Petty officer's mess. We're all out. Good morning. You know, as far as you're concerned, Chief, Oliver Cromwell needn't have bothered to invent the telephone at all. I wish he hadn't, mate. Yeah. Number one's always on the other end of it, blistering my blooming bird holes off. Always providing he's not here doing it in person. Exactly, and I don't know which is best, but he... I, 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 <laughs> well, stand me, where'd you come from, sir? I didn't even know you were aboard. Well, fascinating. I was always sure you knew my every move long before I did. So was I. Hard yeah. <laughs> uh, luck, Chief. I want you to report to the bridge. Your coxswain, of course, and Mr Phillips is acting as navigating officer. Mr Phillips, is sir? Uh, yes, with a pair of you up there, I might just as well resign my commission now. We shall miss you, sir. <laughs> Not so fast, Chief. I intend to go down fighting. Now, if I remember, your record is to have run us aground within quarter of a mile of the jetty. Oh, accidents will happen, sir. Yes, well, they'd better not this time. Oh, it'll be all right, sir. His Uncle Ebenezer's following up behind Belt you. Belt up! <laughs> quite so, Chief, quite so. What time do we sign, sir? Very shortly, Chief. I want you on the bridge in five minutes. Aye, aye, sir. And if we end up on a sandbank this time, it won't be any good telling me you never could remember which was port and which was starboard. No, sir. Splendid. Grand morning, isn't it? See you on the bridge. Steady at that. <laughs> Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Left hand down a bit. Ah, oh, Mr. Phillips, sir. Now straighten her up. Mm, right hand down a bit. Right hand down a bit. Now mind, that, sir. mind the starn. Straighten her up again. Straighten her up, sir. Oh, well done, Pertwee. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Phillips, sir. With quite the strangest navigation orders I've ever heard, you've got us into the open sea without bringing the jetty or half the gas works with us. <laughs> Well, it was a near thing once, sir. Yeah, I had noticed. Yes, it was uh, that delicate and intriguing little moment, sir, when we both covered our eyes and waited for the ban. I don't think number one saw that, Chief. No, sir? Uh, no, Chief. I had my eyes shut waiting for the bang, too. Oh. <laughs> um, beg pardon, sir, but uh, is the captain the board, sir? Yeah, yes, Chief. Once he gets his rod sorted out, he'll probably be up here to ask us to take him to the nearest fishing grounds. Well, I wouldn't object to that, sir. Just so long as somebody told me which way to twiddle this flaming wheel. Ah, yes. Uh, Mr. Phillips, 
Uh, mm, yeah, mm. Something seems to be troubling you. What are you staring out to see for? What, to see, sir? Uh, I mean, uh, I was staring out, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, just, just looking, sir. Quite, but what for? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, nothing. Uh, 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 ch chief. Sir? Can you see the Isle of Wight Ferry anywhere? <laughs> the, uh, the Isle of Wight Ferry, sir? Mr. Phillips! Oh, my ear. Oh, I, I mean, my, my eye. I, I mean, uh, I, I, I eye, sir. Well, where are your charts and plots? Uh, my, my charts? Well, uh, that's why I keep asking myself. So I, 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 where are they, Leslie, I say? <laughs> oh. Well, well. well there's not, nothing to worry about, sir. As, as soon as that ferry turns up, we'll just slide in the long stern and... <laughs> uh, morning, number one. Morning, Miss Phillips. No, I don't think I'm understanding. Uh, good morning, sir. Welcome. Uh, splendid fishing weather, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't know, sir. Uh, well, it is. Capital. Now, uh, here's where I want you to drop anchor. Wonderful spot for Haddock, you know. Uh, uh, Pardon me for interrupting, sir, but do you think someone could tell me what course we're on? Oh, the fish course. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, um, oh, of course, of course, yes, the course, of course. Uh, it's, um, oh, Lord. Uh, yes, it's, um, now, steady as we are. Steady as you are, sir. Um... I think. A bridge, uh, number one here. Starboard lookout, yes, sir. Well, what is it? Enemy fleet dead ahead, sir. Oh, message received. Action stations, enemy fleet dead ahead. Aye, aye, sir. So they are. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Pertwee. Sir? Um, I don't, don't know. <laughs> um, uh, just, um, just Pertwee, Pertwee. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, do something, Mr. Phillips. Or do suggest we maintain course and ram the enemy head on? Oh, isn't it marvellous? Never get any decent fishing on these exercises. No, we're getting the other all the time, Mr. Phillips. Well, how about fuller stanza? Uh, uh, no, no, I've got it. I've got oh, it. I hope somebody has. We'll be able to see the whites of their eyes in a minute, sir. <laughs> um, hard a port, Chief. Hard a port, sir. Ah, you're going to beach her. Yes, sir, I thought it was the best thing to do, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, no, no, sir, no. I'm, I'm taking... Um, Evasive actions. Uh, you have been ever since you came aboard, Mr. Phillips. Uh, if, if we go up that second inlet, sir, it'll take us out to, to the east, and we'll end up behind the enemy. The uh, <laughs> second inlet? How do you know? Oh, I've lived round here all my life, sir. <laughs> I've, I've sailed up and down these inlets dozens of times, sir. Well, steady on the second inlet, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. It came... Um, it looks a bit narrow. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> it winds out very quickly. Are you quite sure, Mr. Phillips? Oh, rather, sir. I've lived down here all my life. Steady as you are, Chief. Steady as you are, sir. Yes. Left hand down a bit. A straighten her up. Careful. Careful. This inlet doesn't seem to be getting any wider, Mr. Phillips. No, it's getting the thumping sort narrower, sir. <laughs> you can open the portal and stub your fag out in the bank now. <laughs> oh, nonsense, nonsense, Pertwee. I told you I've lived here all my life. <laughs> Look out! What the, what the place is that? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Uh, uh, Mr. Phillips! Well, uh, sir, sir. You seem to be in residence again. <laughs> we are aground. I, I had noticed, sir. Of all the tomfool, idiotic numbskulls who ever wore a uniform... I'm it. <laughs> uh, I, ju I just don't understand it, sir. I'm sure that second inlet ought to lead round to the east. And I... Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> now what... I've just remembered. It's the first inlet that gets wider. <laughs> uh, now he tells us. Brilliant. This one is a sort of cul-de-sac. <laughs> if it wasn't before, it is now. <laughs> oh, I don't know, sir. So could be worse. It's a lovely view. Magnificent, Chief, but I'm sick to death of it already. All I wish to know is how do we get off? If Commander Povey ever finds us here, he'll have you court-martialed for hazarding your ship, sir. Well, that eventuality had crossed my mind, Mr. Phillips. Oh, jolly bad luck, sir. Uh, I'll spare your sympathy, Mr. Phillips. I shall base my defence on the incompetence of a navigating officer who leaves his charts behind and lets us steam up the backwaters like Sanders of the river. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Yes, Chief. I yo sir. A uh, bridge here. Sounds of the river speaking. I, I mean, uh, <laughs> sub, um, 
Sub Lieutenant Phillips speaking. Uh, starboard lookout, you, sir. What is it, Goldstein? Oh, it's a tatty old tug astern, sir. I, I think he wants to pass. Oh, ah. oh, thanks. Uh, what is it, Mr. Phillips? It's a tatty old, I mean, a tatty old, I mean, a tatty old tug at uh, sir. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think he wants to pass. Tatty old tug. It's Nunky. Here, let's have a look. <laughs> oi, oi! What's a Nunky? How's Auntie? <laughs> Well, tell her to take more water with it. <laughs> uh, Chief, do you think you could postpone the family reunion until later? Yeah, but, but, but it's Uncle Ebenezer, sir. He'll soon have us off, though, sir. Ah, at a price, of course. At a price, of course. Oh. Ah, oh, new no. <laughs> well, here we are again, then. Hello, <laughs> Nunky. Hello. Fancy you turning up, eh? Hey. Hey? Yes, fancy. Uh, we appear to require your assistance, Mr. Pertwee. <laughs> Not half, you don't. <laughs> hey, you've really done it this time, haven't you? It's going to cost you something, this lot is. <laughs> yes, I never imagined that it wouldn't. However, let us settle the sordid financial details later. Uh, we're supposed to be in an exercise, and I would like to rejoin the outside world as soon as possible. Preferably before they start looking for us. Fair enough. I'll pop down and get a hawser on your starn. <laughs> as soon as you entered this inlet, I knew we were in business. <laughs> nice, Jam. I do wish you'd cheer up a bit. <laughs> uh, sir. Uh, well, Chief? Uh, look, sir, it, it's just, just a thought, sir. But if we're going to try and keep this quiet, how are we going to pay Nunky? Ah, and I've already thought of that, Chief. Oh. It'll make a nasty dent in the unit comfort fund, of course, but a few extra socials should soon put that right. Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Pertby's going to get done something horrible for a month, I know. Uh, it's possibly longer, of course. Uh, well, it could depend on how hard a bargain uh, Nunky drives. Message received, sir. Uh, I'll have a short, sharp chat with him later. Oh, splendid. Remember me to your aunt, won't you? Oh, aye, aye, sir. I think the tug's about to haul us off, sir. Splendid. Now, let's watch the grand old man of the sea at work. Now, he's taking the strain, sir. <laughs> He's hit a house. <laughs> I say, what happened? Did the uh, did the hawser break? No, sir. No, no. We pulled the star clean off his tug. <laughs> Lummy, he shot clean up the bank into that house. <laughs> I say, he didn't half go, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he did, sir. Yeah. I shot an arrow in the air. It felt worse. We can all see where. You miserable little lads, I was pissed up on dogs, did I? No! Now look what you've done! What on earth's going on now? Oh, it's Nunky, sir. He's bunging coal at us. You know, sir, I think he's a little bit upset, sir. Uh, very possibly, Mr. Phillips. Ah! Now what? Who did that? That's what I want to know. What the blazes is going on oh, here? What seems to be the trouble, sir? Trouble? There I was in my deck chair doing a bit of fishing, when suddenly I get clouded with a load of kitchen nuts. Bullseye! Oh, not bullseyes, kitchen nuts, you oh. know. <laughs> Most peculiar, sir. Yeah, jolly painful it was. Just got a bite, too. Must have been a big fellow weighing a ton. Probably knock his stern, sir. <laughs> well, most distressing, but the fact remains that we're still aground. Yes, and knock is even more aground than we are. He's halfway to Dorking. <laughs> There's only one thing for it, sir. Uh, what's that, Chief? Well, sir, now then, look, it, it so happens that a relative of mine. Sir. Ah, one we've met before. No, sir, no, no, no. You haven't had the pleasure of this one. I shall look forward to this. Lovely, lovely, sir. Lovely. Well, it so happens by pure coincidence, naturally. <laughs> That he's in a key position as staff officer in charge of salvage and distress crafts. Ah, that's the life. Very enjoyable, sir. Very enjoyable. Well, I thought, I thought I could call him up on the radio and ask him to whistle something over here, a bit sharpish. Like. Yes, an excellent scheme, Chief, but there is a slight snag. Snag, sir? Uh, yes, you see, during the exercise, we're supposed to be maintaining radio silence. Now, if we start calling up your delightful and uh, useful relative, Commander Shaw, worse still, Commander Povey, almost bound to hear it. Yes, it's a problematical, sir. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. 
It's a big problematical. It is indeed. All the same, sir, as far as I can see, our only old tournament order to deep series, sir, <laughs> is to sit here until old Thundercats finds out anyway, so uh, we may as well chance it, sir. Yes, you're absolutely right, Chief. We'll chance it. Now, tell the radio operator to put you through, but try to be brief. Aye, aye, sir. Devil are they, Shaw? Sure. That's what beats me. Most extraordinary. We've combed the whole blasted channel. There's not a sign of them. I thought they must have gone up that inlet that leads to the east. We went round that. Makes us look a pair of ninnies, doesn't it? <laughs> How do you make that out? Well, a bit pointless being observers when you can't find the ship you're supposed to be observing. <laughs> None, Shaw. Sure. With all due respect, I would like it clearly understood that it is Troutbridge that is lost, not us! Six of one and a demi doos of the other, if you ask me. <laughs> Neither of us knows where the other is. Excuse me, sir. Oh, good show. Two lumps, please. Uh, uh, sorry, sir, I haven't brought tea, but there's a, a radio signal I thought you ought to know about at once. I'd rather have had the tea. Radio signal? What signal? There shouldn't be any. It's from Troutbridge, sir. Ah! And what did they say? Peekaboo? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't to us, sir. I didn't imagine it would be. Well, it seems they're stuck on a sandbank and they're trying to get help from a staff officer, Wilberforce Pertwee of Pompey, sir. I might have known it. What's their position, do you know? Uh, yes, sir. They're about here on the chart, sir. I say, they're up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> I mean, without an outlet. Mm, so that's where they went. What are you going to do? Follow them? No. We are going to wait for them at the mouth of the inlet and pounce on them when they come out. Did the message say anything else? Uh, no, sir. Well, just uh, keep your eye out for old Thunderguts. He'll be doing his nut. <laughs> what? And all the confounded, blistering, blithering... Infant. They're right. He is. Jerk the mess up about that tea, will you? Uh, nearly out of the inlet now, sir. Thank you, Chief. A little moonlight would have been handy. Uh, should be up shortly, sir. Jolly sporting of your relative to pull us off like that, Pertwee. Well, he, uh, he owed me a slight payment, sir. Really? Yes, sir. He's, uh, his wife's a chief cook in the Rams, and I had her posted to foreign service for him. Oh, <laughs> how kind. Ah, the open sea at last. Hard a port, then full speed ahead, Chief. Hard a port, then full speed ahead, sir. Left hand down a bit. Left oh, hand down a bit. Shut up, Mr. Phillips. It was your left hand down a bit, straighten that up a bit, that got us into this awful mess. Well, it never had happened, sir, if that ferry had been on time. Action stations! Who did that? Stop engines! Ahoy there, Trotbridge! Oh, I seem to recognise those velvet tones. I think it's Commander Povey in Makepeace using the loud halo, sir. Can't be, sir. He doesn't need one. <laughs> Ahoy there, Trotbridge! This is Commander Povey! All right, caps off. I'm delighted to see you are still afloat. Yeah, pass me the loud halo, Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir. Oh, hi there, Commander Povey. And have you been waiting long? Number care number one. I'm going to demand a full inquiry when this exercise is over. Yes, I, I thought you might. Uh, uh, just a slight error in navigation, sir. So I gather. You ought to have joined the rest of the fleet 50 miles east an hour ago. Yes, we rather expected to at one time, sir. <laughs> Well, I'm going to make you join this exercise if it's the last thing I do. Born in a style of Whitby's, and we'll lead you round the inlet to the rest of the fleet. They will, don't bother, sir. We know the way now. I'm not taking any chances. Get a start. The aye, aye, sir. Well, Chief, you heard what the man said. Aye, aye, sir. Slow ahead. Left hand down a bit. Mr. <laughs> Phillips. Oh, um, oh, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. Right hand up a bit. <laughs> chief, uh, sir, would you oblige? Uh, with pleasure, sir. Mr. Phillips, sir? Yes, Chief. Belt up! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Not at all, sir. Uh, the moon's coming up, sir. We can see where we're going now, sir. Uh, sir? Don't worry uh, about it, Chief. Just keep going. No, uh, but, 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 sir, uh, this inlet, sir, it looks a little like no, me. Just follow make peace, Chief. Commander Povey knows the way. I say, I say, sir, this inlet doesn't seem to be getting any wider, sir. Well, doesn't it, Mr. Villain? <laughs> Bridge number one here. Uh, starboard lookout here, sir. Uh, what is it? Well, sir, there's a tug with no star up ahead, sir. Thank you. 
Stop engines, Chief. Stop engines, I said. Ah, well, now all we've got to do is to wait. And I don't think it'll be long, son. <laughs> Pretty tunes, huh? <laughs> thank you, thank you. The title's in the last line, and I never get that far. Sir? Well? What are we waiting for, sir? <laughs> That's what, Mr. Phillips. Lummy, he's gone aground. Ah, now we don't know that for certain, do we, Chief? No, sir. No, not for certain. And uh, that's a poser, isn't it, Chief? A poser. Sir. A poser, Chief. We could, of course, proceed and uh, extract Commander Povey from his predicament, but if we do, and he is aground... We'll have to keep ourselves available for a right mouthful at his court martial. Ah, <laughs> exactly. Over the serious matter of hazarding his ship, Chief. How very serious indeed. Alternatively, we might have a word with a certain relative of yours. The one in charge of salvage and recovery craft, I'll take it in. The very one, Chief, suggesting that the next time he's passing this way, he might um, earn himself a discreet bob or two. Every little help, sir, he comes from a very large family. Precisely. <laughs> and if we decide on that course, it might well be that should Commander Povey feel any animosity towards us at some future date, we... We might uh, feel entitled to mention, sir. A certain occasion when things went bump in the night. Oh, fully entitled, sir, fully entitled. Of course, that should fix old thunder, guys. What? Yes. <laughs> I fancy, sir, Mr. Phillips, a slower stern, would you say, Chief? Oh, I'd say so, sir. Slower stern it is, sir. Oh, there, Perfect! Welcome, are you? As Mr. Phillips would say, left hand down a bit, Chief. Left hand down a bit, it is, sir. Hey, where are you going? Uh, Straighten her up, sir. <laughs> By all means, Chief. Grand evening, isn't it? That was Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, and Heather was Heather Chasen. Commander Shaw was Michael Bates, April Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, and Ebenezer Pertwee was Tenniel Evans. The recorded production was by Alastair Scott Johnston. (laughs) 